Any minute now. Hey, hey, all right. All right. Guys, big show today. Big, big, big show. Big show. Big There's show. So much. Well. No. <laughs> See, that's a... Uh, some people... Like well, me. it's a big show. <laughs> some people like me, they don't realize it's a wrestling <laughs> reference. Uh, guys, uh, being here, big show today. Very big show. Big news happened today. It was going to be a good show regardless, but Sony had to come along and say, hey, hey. we got something for you, Wolf Dead. Hey. Don't you worry. Hi, I'm Mark Cerny, and we're doing this just for Will and Bob. <laughs> That's what he said. First words out of his mouth. Hey, I'm Mark Cerny, and uh, I, there's, <laughs> I got nine minutes of a technical presentation Hey, guys, for you. I'm Mark Cerny. I know the last time I talked about a PlayStation console was really long and boring and technical, but don't worry. Now we've edited it. <laughs> I was very confused because there were a bunch of live streams that were an hour long. Yeah. And then there was the Sony one that was nine minutes. Yeah. And I was like, I want to make sure I'm getting the right one. And then I looked at like the GameSpot one and yeah. it was 40 minutes of timer. And that's, then what 10 they, minutes. that's like IGN does this too, where it's like, you know, it, it's a two hour live stream, but you know, an hour and a half of that is just trailers. Yep. And then it's like, a lot of punditry from the people at IGN. Then the nine minute, you know, clip and then more punditry. Yes. So, so yeah, that's, but not us. We're just, we're just showing up late in the day. No. Uh, y'all have to start over. What are you talking? About? No, we don't shut up. <laughs> what are you talking about? We're on YouTube. Are we not? Well, anyway, there's a big show. Uh, yes. we have that to talk about. A bunch of like handhelds and stuff got announced. It's I don't think we are on YouTube. Right? It just says coming soon. <laughs> Waiting for Wolf Den podcast. It's because it's because Mark Cerny is playing tricks on us. He knows we're making fun of him. We're live. I'm live right here. Hmm. Did I click on the wrong thing? We're live. It's, it says live as of five seconds. There you go. Okay, right, there you I, go. I just refreshed. First I, I didn't try. do anything. That was YouTube's fault. Yeah. Anyway, a bunch of handhelds happened. Yeah, uh, a lot of handhelds. Uh, I'm sick of them. Some of them. <laughs> uh, there's also rumored PC handheld stuff. Uh, yeah, well, there's rumored PC handheld stuff, and then there's a confirmed PC handheld. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, by another, you know, yeah. main man. PC manufacturer. Not Microsoft. We're probably somebody else. Probably gonna talk a lot about the uh PlayStation though. And there's there, a bunch of other stuff. There's a lot of there was a lot of PlayStation news even before this announcement. You know? There are a lot of things that I felt like were worth talking about. And then Sony just came out and said, We're gonna give you the big thing to talk about. Yeah. So uh I think that this was only known that they were doing this uh, announcement yesterday. Yesterday, right? yeah. yeah. I mean, it was rumored. We we talked about the rumors for a long time. We even saw a picture mm -hmm. of what might have been uh, the rumored uh, PlayStation Five Pro. Yep. And uh, now it's finally here, yeah. and we can talk about it. Uh, but before we get into it, Blackbird, thanks for the twenty nine months. Can I use your hungry fifty for fifty percent off of a PS Five Pro? No, you have but, to pay a lot of money. But good luck. If it works, let me know. <laughs> Yeah, the PlayStation 5 Pro, the big news, the big topic is that there is, it's very expensive. Yes. Uh, so I guess we'll just dive right into just it. dive right into it while I try to make it a little cooler in this room. Okay. Welcome to the PlayStation 5 Pro, the most visually impressive way to play games on PlayStation. This is from the official PlayStation blog. This is their blog post after the live stream went up. Featuring, uh, features include a GPU upgrade, advanced ray tracing, and PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution uh, take players to new heights. Play what was that called? PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution. Right. Uh, also known as Pisser. Pisser. Yes. Okay. PSSR. Pisser. Pisser. Over the last four years since the launch of the PS5, we worked hard to continuously evolve the console experience and deliver the great games our players expect from us. Today, I am incredibly proud to announce the next step in the evolution and welcome PS5, uh, the PlayStation 5 Pro to the PlayStation family, our most advanced and innovative console hardware 
to date. Uh, we developed the PS5 Pro with deeply, um, sorry, we developed the PS5 Pro with deeply engaged players and game creators in mind, as many have asked for a console that runs even higher fidelity graphics with smoother frame rates at 60 frames per second. We achieved this on PS5 Pro with several key performance features. Um, number one, upgraded GPU. With the PS5 Pro, we are upgrading to a GPU that has 67% more compute units than the current PS5 console and 28% faster memory. I know that everybody who has had a PS5 has been begging for 65% more compute units. Yes. So everybody who's been saying that, your prayers have been answered. We are now finally getting 67% more compute units. Overall, this enables up to 45% faster rendering for gameplay, making the experience much smoother. When I was playing Spider-Man 2, mm -hmm. every time I was swinging across Manhattan, every time I would open up the web wings and glide, I would say to myself, this is fun. But if it was, if I was going 45% faster, if it was just 45% faster, then this would be the greatest scheme of all time. If it was just 45% faster yes. loading in the buildings that I yeah. can't see because they're out of vision, <laughs> uh, then this would, then this would Which be Which is a, a shame because it would have made the game a 10 out of 10, and as it stands, it's a 5. Um, <laughs> Re realistically, games like PlayStation 5, uh, games like Spider-Man mm -hmm. have uh, different performance modes. Yes. and Most the, games on PlayStation 5. The, yeah. I'm sure it'll get it. I, I don't know if they'll get into it in this blog post, but the goal of the PlayStation 5 Pro is just to make it so that the lower performance mode is 4K60. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. So if you've ever been playing your PlayStation 5 and you're like, God, I wish I could just get more frames out of the higher performance mode. Well, just give them $700 <laughs> and you'll be able to do that. I went a little ahead. Spoiler there. alert. All right. So. Point one, uh, upgraded GPU. Point two, advanced ray tracing. We've added even more powerful ray tracing that provides more dynamic reflection and refraction of light. This allows the rays to be traced at double. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what it says. It allows the rays to be cast <laughs> I thought, at I thought double. it is. <laughs> uh, you tricked me. It allows the rays to be cast at double and at times triple the speeds of the current PS5 console. And thank God, yes. because when I'm playing Spider-Man, I'm oh thinking my to God. myself, God, the sun looks so good beaming off of yeah. the Empire State Building. Wait, isn't, didn't they, they not put the Empire no, State Building? No, they could have put the Chrysler Building okay. in. The Empire State Building is in there. God! Yeah. I really wish the Chrysler Building was in here, but since it's not, I will look at the Empire State <laughs> Building. And since the rays are bouncing off yeah. in such a way, I just wish... That they be cast at double or even at times triple the speed of the current way that it's casting. You remember the the Spider-Man movie posters where you always see like New York's reflection in his eyes? Yeah. The Spider-Man 2, the game on PlayStation 5, doesn't do that. So I fucking hate that game because I can't <laughs> see the reflection of the New York City in Spider-Man's eyes. But now with the PlayStation 5 Pro, it certainly you sounds like can't. I can. You still can. I still can. His <laughs> eyes aren't reflective. <laughs> All right, anyway. All right. Last point, uh, AI-driven upscaling. We've also introduced PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, Pisser, Pisser. an AI-driven upscaling that uses a machine learning-based technology to provide super sharp image clarity by adding an extraordinary amount of detail. And thank God, because yes. when I'm playing my <laughs> PlayStation 5, the first thing I'm saying is, God, it's just, it's not sharp. Yeah, I just no. wish that... Ah, I'm on my Best Buy Black Friday deal TV. I'm yeah. like, mm, man, uh, I just know, wish I could AI driven upscale yeah. the smooth polygons. I'm, I'm looking at Spider-Man 2. I'm looking at uh, Resident Evil 4 remake. And I'm saying, wow, these are the ugliest games I've ever this, seen. This system if sucks. only the PlayStation 5 had machine learning. Yes. That would fix make, everything. Yes. And now I can see all the follicles on Leon's head. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the PlayStation 5 Pro uh, provides gamers with amazing graphics at higher frame rates. You can hear Mark Cerny, lead architect for the PS5 Pro, discuss the key innovations from the PS5 Pro in the following video presentation. This presentation provides a deep dive into the key performance features that makes the PS5 Pro truly special. Uh, other enhancements include PS5 Pro Game Boost, which can apply. Game Boost. <laughs> which well, can... now thank God because when I'm playing my PlayStation Five, I'm like, this game's great, but man, if we could boost it, if we could boost the game, well, Game Boost 
can can apply to more than 8,500 backwards compatible PS4 games playable on the PS5 Pro. This feature may stabilize or improve the performance of supported PS4 and PS5 games. Enhanced image quality for PS4 games is also available to improve the resolution of select PS4 games. Uh, PS5 Pro will also launch with the latest wireless technology, Wi-Fi 7. Uh, Wait, that's actually cool. Yeah. That's actually good because the... PlayStation 5 has pretty bad wireless. So well, that's yeah. actually a good thing. Yeah, but I mean, like, <laughs> Wi Fi 7 is just a remake of Wi Fi 4, but they replaced the main character with a woman. Oh, okay. So it's, it's the woke remake of Wi Fi yeah. 6. Okay. I Which understand. makes it even worse because when Wi Fi 8 comes around, you know, the main character from Wi Fi 4 is just going to be a grumpy asshole the whole time. Right. So, whatever. Of. Uh, in territory supporting the standard of VRR Ver. and VR and 8K gaming are also supported. Are they, though? That's such a Are they Sony? Why are did, they really Why did they put that there? There's one game and it doesn't even actually do it. Yes, but Bob, have you not been paying attention with the power of the yes. PlayStation 5 Pro? True. Now you can play your Ratchet and Clanks in 8K. Hopefully the ray tracing will help with that extra resolution yes. bump. It's humbling to see how game creators are embracing the latest technology from the PS5 Pro and several games will be patched with free software updates for gamers to take advantage of the PS5 Pro's features. These games can be identified with PS5 Pro enhanced label within their titles. Uh, some games you can look forward to include blockbuster hits from PlayStation Studios and our third party partners such as Alan Wake 2, Assassin's Creed Shadows, Demon's Souls, Dragon's Dogma 2, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, Gran Turismo 7, Hogwarts Legacy, Horizon Forbidden West, Spider-Man 2, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, The Crew Motorfest, The First Descendant, The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered, and more. That's actually a lot. That's a lot. I am extremely skeptical on the actual performance difference until I get like a digital foundry breakdown. Yeah. Because this does not sound uh, like a like a big change at all yeah if, I mean, if, if anything i know they showed like comparisons in the in the presentation itself but like i don't remember these games being that choppy also like the graphical difference between the two is like very negligible yeah when they show like the fidelity the performance mode versus like the high fidelity mode yeah like, no they, there's not there's yeah. n almost no difference yeah. and i think that we've kind of proven that uh consumers I mean, consumers look at something like this and they say, bigger number, better thing. Yeah. Let me let me buy the better thing. But uh, I think these days, people who play games just want the cool thing yeah. in the most convenient way possible. Yeah. And, and having like a super powerful machine uh, isn't necessarily uh, going to move units. Yeah, and I think people are starting to realize, like, especially... You know, every AAA game that comes out all look the same. They all look hyper realistic. And meanwhile, Bellatro sold two million units. Is that on iOS yet? I, it's coming soon, I believe. But <laughs> I like, need, I need to that's get that. on like everything. So people are aware of the fact that like good graphics don't necessarily mean a great gaming experience. Yeah. Also, the Switch selling 150 million yes. units. It's out. Okay. Oh, coming soon. Never mind. All right. It's going to be $10, but it's also going to be on Apple Arcade. Okay. Uh, we kept looking at the PS5 Pro con uh, consistent with the overall PlayStation uh, family of products. You'll notice the height is the same as the original PlayStation 5, uh, and the width is the same as the current PS5 model to accommodate higher performance specs. Players can add an Ultra HD Blu-ray disc drive or swap out the console covers when they become available. Uh. The PS5 Pro fits perfectly with the PlayStation 5 family of products and is compatible with the PS5 accessories currently available, including PlayStation VR 2, PlayStation Portal, DualSense Edge, Access Controller, Pulse Elite, and Pulse Explorer. The user interface and the network services will also remain the same as the PlayStation 5. And here is the sticking point. The PlayStation 5 Pro will be available this holiday at a manufacturer-suggested retail price of 699 US dollars, 699 British pounds, uh, 799 euros, and uh, 111,000, sorry, 119,980 Japanese yen. That includes tax. Mm -hmm. uh, it will include a two terabyte SSD, a DualSense wireless controller, and a copy of Astro's Playroom, Playroom pre-installed in every PlayStation 5 Pro purchase. So, if you were wondering, 
don't worry. Astro's Playroom mm-hmm. will be playable in 8K, 125 frames per second, because that's what that game needed. Actually, no. <laughs> it's not going to be playable in 8K at all. We don't even know what the <laughs> performance difference will be on Astro's Playroom. It performed fine. It didn't, wasn't it 4K60? But it wasn't pro. Now we're going to play it now on the PlayStation pro. pro. This confirms that Sony thinks that pro means all digital, by the way. It, uh, the it, the next sentence is uh, the PlayStation 5 Pro is available as a discless console with the option to purchase the currently available disc drive for PlayStation 5 separately. The PS5 Pro will launch on November 7th, 2024 and will be available at participating retailers and directly from PlayStation at direct.playstation.com. Pre-orders will begin on September 26th, 2024. Uh, in an update... Uh, pre-orders will be available directly from PlayStation and at participating retailers. Um, on October 10th, pre-orders will be available at all participating retailers. So it's going to be available on September 26th from PlayStation Direct first. Mm-hmm. And then on October 10th, all other participating retailers will get it. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. No one's going to buy this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was considering getting this when I heard about the rumors of it, uh, because I can make a video. And right. I, I'm, I'm curious on the differences between the old PlayStation 5 right. and the PlayStation 5 Pro. I want to I check the performance side by side and see what's better. Uh, and I think people would be interested in that. Uh, I, we kind of knew that it was going to be expensive. We knew that it was going to be around this much. I remember talking about it. What's the PlayStation 5 right now? Like $500? $500. And then it went up to like 550 In other terms. In other uh, terms. Yeah. I think like so five hundred dollars. Now this is like seven hundred dollars. It's a lot. That's a two hundred dollar price. Yeah, bump. and you the know PS- they're not going to drop the, the original PS4 PlayStation Five. Four Pro was not that big of a yeah. price jump, and also too the PS4 regular got a price decrease when this came out. They haven't decreased the price of the PlayStation Five standard unless you buy it refurbished. They they're opening I, up a refurbished store, and that's where all the price drops. I want to be very clear. I'm not defending the price at all. Right. I assumed it was going to be around $700. I remember talking about it and hearing that $700, and I was like, that, I understand that is where they might price it. Right. So I was prepared for that. And then when I heard it, I was still shocked for right. some reason. Because you I think, knew it. I knew it was happening, and I was still like, I cannot believe it. Because this. you think, like, maybe there's a chance that, like, they won't, like, sell it for that much. Or at the very least, they'll, like, reduce the price no. of... It's give me something. There, if they had something to show me that yeah. is worth seven hundred dollars, then maybe I'd be interested. Yeah. But there's they removed features. Yeah. There's not a disc drive. In no. It. You have to pay for that. You have separately. to pay for that separately. It also doesn't come with a stand. <laughs> like that's <laughs> fucked. <laughs> Sony has confirmed that Pro means you don't get a stand. I. It's the stand boggles me because none of the PlayStation's. That stand vertically ever came with a stand. You also don't really need this. You don't really need it. Unless you have a cat. Yeah. And you could probably get a stand. Yeah. I was considering getting this, and then I saw the price tag, and I was like, I really cannot justify that because I know this is never getting turned on again. Yeah. I haven't turned on my PlayStation 5 except for this week when Astro's Playroom came out. Yeah. Before that, it's been a, a long time. Yeah, I haven't touched it in a long time. Mine's actually unplugged, and you reminded me from your tweet this morning that I probably <laughs> should plug it in to make sure it works. Um, but yeah, like, it just... there. There's no reason for this to exist. There is no reason for it to be this much money. Yeah. You know? And I think, honestly, I think this is less about getting a PlayStation 5 Pro out than it is just finding a way to sell the PlayStation 5 at a higher price. Yes. Because Sony has been increasing the pri- increasing the price of the PlayStation 5 in all territories except North America for some reason. And now they have found a way to increase the price of the PlayStation 5 in North America without actually raising the price. They just make a brand new console for $200 more and they're going to try and sell you on it by like it looks marginally better. I think they're just going through the motions. I think that they just, yeah. Sony thought "Eh, Xbox might do this. We've done this before. We're going to have to make a pro model. But again, like the PlayStation four pro was not all that impressive. It wasn't true. 4k. It was 
super sampled upscaling back before they called it AI. You know, it was that kind of 4K upscaling. And as far as I know, like it didn't sell like a significant amount. You're right. According to Stealth, it says in the US, the PS4 Pro accounted for 13% of PS4 family sales across, uh, uh, according to Sir Kana, I guess is the- That's the NPD, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that answers that. 13% of PlayStation 4 sales yeah. were the PlayStation 4 Pro, which is less than I thought. I knew it was low, but that's really, really low. And I would imagine that this would be lower. Because it's a lot more money and there's a lot less reason to get it. The PlayStation 4 Pro made a little bit of sense because as that console generation was out, pe more people were getting 4K TVs and yeah. stuff. So there needed to be a little bit of a, a 4K upgrade. So that provided that kind of. Yeah. So it made a little bit of sense. This one makes even less sense. And the then here, here's another uh, tweet that I just that i thought was interesting yeah uh this is uh an example of adding more triangles to to a a, a figure yeah to uh give it more fidelity yeah. and across gaming history we're used to upgrades like this yeah. like you know the n64 yeah to the gamecube we're like whoa that's so many more polygons yeah uh as you get from like six thousand to sixty thousand it's it doesn't matter. Yeah. We're, not, <laughs> it, we're, we're not making like big strides anymore. So I just did the math. Um, the PlayStation 4 sold 106, 106 million units. Mm -hmm. That's across all versions of the PlayStation 4. So 13% of that is 13.7 million. Okay. That's like a... That's a lot. That's a lot. But like compared to, you know, the rest of it. So that means a, mi a big minority, like a minority of people are buying this. This is not yeah. gonna push. This is not gonna like push PlayStation over the edge and like give them the the edge in the competition. Yeah, this is not really gonna do much for them. You're absolutely right. Um, this is could also be them getting ahead of the uh, Grand Theft Auto Six launch mm -hmm. because uh, people don't. I think I said this on the Nerd Nest podcast. Uh, people most normal people uh aren't buying uh hardware they yeah. they buy one thing and they keep it forever uh and that's why mo i think we've said this before on the show most people haven't even upgraded from a playstation 4 to a playstation yeah. 5 most people are just playing their games on their playstation 4 because they can play warzone they could play uh fortnite uh a nfl or whatever Madden, that and yeah. is still coming out on the older platforms fifa is still coming yeah. out on the older platforms so why even bother making the upgrade it's not even that much different and in fact in the presentation two of the games uh mark cerny showcased were ghost of tsushima and last of us 2 playstation 4 games yeah <laughs> they're still showcasing playstation 4 games to highlight the power of the playstation 5 yeah so people don't even have a reason to get a playstation 5 let yeah. alone a playstation 5 Bro. Yeah. But when the Grand Theft Auto 6 comes out, uh, people are going to need to get a PlayStation 5. Yeah. So this is going to be one of the pre premium options for those people. Yeah. So that could sell some stuff, but right now it just doesn't seem a, a worthy upgrade at all. At I'm all. not yeah. seeing... No, uh, there's, there's nothing... Upgrade. This was a shot from the end of the presentation mm -hmm. when they were cycling through like all the beautiful graphics of the playstation 5 pro this is a shot from final fantasy i think 15 uh i guess it's supposed to show the ray tracing but look at the polygons on these flowers <laughs> <laughs> it looks so bad they're all like such jagged yeah it's ridiculous so i can't justify getting one of these uh even for a review because i know yeah. I'm, I'm never going to use it i would love to get loaned one but i don't know how that's going to happen um Tell Wood to get it. And Wood, he's in the chat. Hey, Wood, you, you Wood, buy one. Wood, it would be such a great video for you <laughs> if you if, if got one of these and did a review on it. It would be such a great video. And, and then can I come over? Um, <laughs> another reason I can't justify getting it. Uh, the, the different face plates are not out at launch. Right. And there is still no black disk drive. Yeah, you would have to. Uh, well, the disk drive comes with a white faceplate, so you'd have to buy the faceplate for that. Yeah. Well, you need. There is no disk drive faceplate. 
Oh. It's just the, it's just the disk drive. So this oh. needs to come in the color of the faceplate that you get. Mm. Yeah. That sucks. So all my consoles right now in the living room are black. Yeah. And this would ruin the theme. So right. I can't do it. Also, they said it's the same size as the PlayStation 5. It's the same uh, height-wise as the PlayStation 5 original. And then thickness, they said PlayStation 5 Slim is the same. That's so big. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. yeah. Island Bob Wolf, a PS5 Pro, Mr. Beast, shocked face. Think of the thumbnail. <laughs> exactly, dude. That's what I'm saying, man. Uh, okay, so okay. when you buy the... Uh, you can get the covers for the slim, uh, and it comes with a faceplate for the... Wait. Yeah. See? That's the, the blue disk drive, and, that, and then that's uh, if you don't want to use the disk drive. Is this for the slim? This is for the slim. Oh, it's a slim. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you can remove, you can change the faceplate yes. of the disk drive. Okay. All right. I'm a little less upset, but I'm still not getting it. Yeah. It is nice they gave you two terabytes, though. Two terabytes is nice. Yeah. Uh, I don't hate that it doesn't come with a disk drive because uh, I think that's a better solution than having two completely different models. Yeah. I hate the price. But at this... <clears throat> See, this is where I get confused because from my understanding, you know, people are still buying games physically more so than they are other forms of media. You know, physical games is usually what parents get for I their kids. I think it's around 50-50 now. Is it? Yeah, I think, I think it's, I think it's a, a lot more than we think okay. because we're, you know. We're plugged in. We're plugged yeah. in and we talk to everybody who is just as uh, crazy about this stuff as right. we are. So, and most people aren't like that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just easier now to download stuff. Yeah. And they must know that and they must yeah. have some reason. Yeah, sure they have so, all the... But also, I think that it's just a cost-cutting measure. And I don't, oh, I don't hate that. I don't hate that instead of two versions, it's an accessory that you slap on. Yeah. I don't hate that. I hate the price. Oh, yeah, It no. needs to be... Significantly less sig than $80. Uh, no, well, I just mean the console itself. Yeah. I don't even mind that the disk drive is $80. I do. That's a reason. I think that's fine. Because you can get a disk, you can get a disk drive for half of that. Yeah, but it's proprietary and slaps on. <laughs> the system itself should be 100 or even $150 cheaper. They, yeah, they should, they should have lowered the price of the PlayStation 5 base model and then. And that also. Yeah, yeah. that's what they should have done. And then release this for what the PlayStation 5 launched at. It needs to be a little more. Okay, so $550. Sure, whatever. <laughs> I could see this being $600, and I wouldn't complain too much. Right. But uh, it's not. It's yeah. $700, and you need to buy some accessories. And the fact that it does, they, they screw you with a $30 stand, Yeah, that's another insane thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a lot of talk. Yes. On tw I spent a long time on Twitter today arguing with people. <laughs> uh, the first thing that I tweeted was, do you think it'll still do this? And it's a picture of the uh, PlayStation 5 yelling at you that you turned it off wrong. And then, of course, I awoke all the PlayStation <laughs> fanboys telling me that I turned it off wrong. You know, it's probably still going to do that. I know. Well, the, the, I got nom flashbacks. The PlayStation 4 did this. It did? It did. I remember it had the disc spinning out. It had the disc spinning out, but it also did this. If you put it in standby mode, it would yell at you that it turned off. I'll say I never put it in standby mode. Yeah. This, the PlayStation 5, yells at you even if it is not in standby mode. If yeah. you turn it off completely, it'll have this error message when mm -hmm. it wakes up. So that gaslights me. PlayStation fans gaslight me into thinking that my power is fucked up in the house, yeah. in the three houses that I've <laughs> lived in. And then... Uh, I decided, so the PlayStation 5 Pro is $700 at yeah. the bare minimum, which is a lot of money. And I decided to look up most expensive consoles of all time. Yeah. But I want the launch price. Mm -hmm. $700 is a lot. Yeah. I don't remember hearing that ever. Yeah. Uh, Neo Geo AES is the third most expensive console of all time at $650. This is launch price, yes. not adjusted for inflation it, or anything. And like... You know, keep him, that came out in the 90s, so like $650 is a lot more. It's a lot yeah. more, yeah, which is insane. But still, you know. Uh, 3DO, yes. $700. Mm -hmm. A lot of money. Yeah. PlayStation 5 Pro, $700. $700. Yeah. Fitting right in there. Philips CDI, $1,000. Yikes. <laughs> One of the themes here 
Is that everything fucking sold terribly? <laughs> <laughs> the Neo Geo, people love the Neo Geo. Yeah, the Neo it wasn't considered a failure, but it didn't sell a lot. No, well, because it was a lot of money. The Neo Geo was a good system. It played arcade quality games at home, yeah. but like in order to you know do that it had to be very powerful and it had to sell and it had to be priced very high it was a pro system yeah yeah it, it was. was originally intended to not even be a retail unit it yeah. was supposed to be just a rental yeah uh and then people wanted it but not that many it sold no. uh the the stat that i saw coupled this with an arcade cabinet and together they sold a million okay or just under a million right. so this barely sold anything um but that's all I was saying was that uh, even without adjusting for inflation, yeah, uh, this is one of the most expensive retail launch prices of a console yeah. of all time. It's maybe tied for second, yeah, which is a lot. And you know, keep in mind, Sony, you know, we assumed learned their lesson because they were raked over the coals on the PlayStation 3 was going to sell for 599 US dollars. Yeah, so Jeff Keeley tweeted, uh, here are inflation adjusted prices for mainline PlayStation consoles since launch. I think he's, I don't know if this is a defense or, or what. Um, it's probably just stats. Yeah, so it says PS1 adjusted for inflation, $611, mm -hmm. which is a lot. Yeah. Uh, but that's in 1995. Uh, that's 1995 just for inflation. It, it, in today's monies, it would be $611, yes. which is a lot. Still not $700. PlayStation 2, $546. All things considered, not that crazy. PlayStation 3, $778. Yeah. Which is a lot. Yes. And then, like you just said, they walked that price way back mm -hmm. because even then they knew that's a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, and came with a disk drive <laughs> <laughs> and the ability to play uh, PlayStation 2 games. No, they took that out. No, but when they launched it. When they it, launched it to play PlayStation. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But in order to get that's the price down, competitive, they had to take, they had out, the to take it out. Yeah. They took things away. Yeah. Uh, PlayStation 4, $538. Uh, PlayStation 4 Pro, $522. Cheaper. Yeah. PlayStation 5, $606. Really? Yeah, that Inflation makes sense. Inflation adjusted that much? Yeah. Yeah. And then today, $700 for the PlayStation 5 Pro. So the only. PlayStation console adjusted for inflation that is more money than the PlayStation 5 Pro is the PlayStation 3, the console that they lowered the price of yeah. almost immediately mm -hmm. because it uh, wasn't selling because nobody yeah. wanted to pay that much. I know like PlayStation 5 sales have kind of plateaued in a way. Uh, I do not think this is the way to raise the, the raise sales, you know, to get sales. No, going I don't again. think yeah. this is, I don't think this is going to sell more at all for them. Yeah. A lot of people are saying that there's still no games. There's still no reason to get a PlayStation console because there's not a lot of games still. Honestly, like, I know that's not true, mm -hmm. but, like, there really isn't, there really has not been anything that, like, specifically says you need a PlayStation 5. It's not like the this. olden days. No. The olden days, a new console would come out and there'd be so many games, especially this long into the life cycle yeah. you see a bunch of games and you're like i need the new system so i can play all these new cool but games. like i'm thinking about it like you know it's not like i played many like next gen games but like spider-man 2 was not demonstrably different from spider-man 1 you know yeah. the resident the i played resident evil 4 across ps4 and ps5 and the experience didn't really change all that much yeah. you know I've, I'm seeing people say like this might be the worst video game generation, and I definitely think it is the most disappointing yeah. because it, there's all of this promise and there's no, there's nothing to show for it. If anything, like we're getting good games, but we're not getting like the next evolution in gaming. If anything, we're just getting you know people being laid off and studios <laughs> shutting down and live service games every two months. This year and maybe a little bit of last year uh were horrible for video games mm -hmm. and i think that uh we're in a we're in a bad time and it's it's hard uh giving us the perspective yes. you know because things are really bad right now mm -hmm. i'm also trying to look at this uh from a different perspective because things just are not 
the same as they were with video games. Like, yeah, uh, we grew up with console generations and new games coming out for those consoles and big generational leaps between those consoles. Yeah. And everybody's playing single player experiences, or if there's a multiplayer game, everyone's playing that multiplayer game. And there were constantly things coming out, and there were constantly like all these things that we were talking about and playing. And these days, uh, that doesn't, that just isn't how most people are enjoying their games. Right. Uh, and it's going to continue to change, mm -hmm. and it's not going to be the same way as what we grew up with. Right. And even this release of the PlayStation 5 Pro is a little bit of a, a tone deaf, like, uh, like, like, out, like out of touch. Like, that's not how games are anymore. Like, yeah. nobody wants a PlayStation 5 Pro. They want, they just want to be able to play the cool new game yeah. with their friends and mm -hmm. uh, they don't need this to do that. Right. They're going to do it probably somewhere where it's easier yeah. and they don't necessarily need it to be 4k 120 frames. Yeah. Per Look at all the most popular games out there. Uh, Roblox, yeah. Fortnite, uh, Warzone, uh, Minecraft. Uh, they're all like over 10 years old. You know, they all, they run on all variety of platforms, not necessarily the most powerful, some even like the least powerful. Yeah. And people are fine with that. Like, and they don't care. We have a lot of parity across platforms. Yeah. We have a lot of cross play and stuff. So, mm -hmm. uh, there's not really like a big console war like there used to be. I yeah. mean, there's still fanboys of some of these consoles. Yes. But, uh, idiots. <laughs> if you, you know, say, Hey man, I want to play call of duty. And you're like, Hey, you got it on a PlayStation. Oh, I got it on Xbox. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. that, that used to happen to us? Yeah. All of our friends needed the yeah. same console, and that's not a thing anymore. Yeah. Uh. So it's just it's just different now. Yeah. I, I was I was saying uh I had a I, I've had multiple friends tell me, uh hey uh my son wants to get a PC what should I get him and I'm like well what what, what games does he want to play on it Fortnite you get him anything just go to Best Buy yeah. close your eyes and just pick one yeah. you know it doesn't matter so like it's just not. Things are different now. Yeah. And this, this, I understand why people are just blindsided by the price of this and the fact that it even exists. Yeah. So, uh, it comes with Astro's Playroom. There Love Astro's yeah, Playroom. Astro, oh, no, in all seriousness, Astro's Playroom, phenomenal game. Great. But, you know, because it ran on a PlayStation 5, it couldn't, you know, it couldn't, the PlayStation 5 couldn't handle Astro's Playroom. Well, the PlayStation 5 Pro. Look out! <laughs> According to Eurogamer, they say the game looks to be playing at around 1,872p. Somewhere north of 80% of a full 4K. So, there's some room! There's some room, There's some room yeah. for yeah. Playroom to be upscaled with go. AI and ray tracing. Yeah. So, chances are extremely low that I'll be getting mm -hmm. this. Uh, let us know in the chat if you even have a PlayStation... Now let us know if you don't have a PlayStation 5 at all, but want one. Doesn't yeah. matter if it's a pro or not. If you don't have a PlayStation yes. 5, but you want one. I want to see if there's anybody here that's in that camp. Yeah. <laughs> um, we got notifications from Monkey, who says, thank, oh, thank you for the seven months. Wolf Wedding Pro is bound to be expensive. Here is my sub. Thanks. <laughs> uh rise frog with 39 months what is up wolf bros i was excited for the playstation 5 pro due to my weird ability to direct minor changes in frame rate and resolution to detect minor changes in frame rate and do not like having to buy the disc drive would still shamelessly buy this so when mark cerny said that uh the upgraded frame rate will uh it's, he says something like it will help with stuttering and uh, it'll register your input quicker or something. Yeah. And I was like, wait a second. Is that why I was such a, having such a hard time in Star Wars Outlaws on my Asus ROG Ally X? Because I was playing a platforming part. Yeah. And I kept falling. Okay. And I was like, I'm jumping at the right time. It's because the frame rate was really low and I was getting input lag. That's okay. why that was happening. So I understand this. I understand that. But I'd still rather play it on the Alex because it's convenient. Yeah, it's portable. Right. So I, I'm I'm doing the trade-off. Yeah. C 
T-Soul, thanks for the 47 months. And Milkman, thanks for the 17 months, 700 my ass. Yeah, I'm with you, buddy. Uh, show in the chat says, don't have one, but I'd like to get one eventually, mainly play on Steam Deck. Uh, that's another thing people were saying. The most expensive Steam Deck is like 650 Yeah. Uh, f- oh, and Farmer Gooch. Oh, Thanks yeah. For the five, five bucks, bucks, baby. All right. Uh, let's move on. We got yeah. a lot to talk about. We got a lot to talk about. We got a lot more Sony news to talk about, but uh, want to do something else? Want to take a break? No, from... do Sony. Let's okay, let's get let's Sony out of the way. It. So uh, they My... raised the price of the Dual Sense. <laughs> we don't need to talk about the Minecraft movie for a while. Yeah, <laughs> let's move that down. All right, this is uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, one of the pricier video game controllers on the market just got even more expensive. Sony has stealthily raised the price of the PlayStation Five Dual Sense. The latest example of how it keeps getting more expensive to upgrade. Uh, this console generation ahead of what many are expecting to be the PS5 Pro reveal later in September. Oh, yeah, this was before they revealed the PS5 Pro. Sony just came along and, like, raised the price of dual senses. As first noted by Wario64, several retailers have recently raised the price of all PS5 DualSense controllers by $5. Sony's own storefront for gaming accessories, PlayStation Direct, also shows the base white DualSense going from $70 to $75, while new color variants and special editions uh, like the Concord and Astrobot themed controllers have all gotten pricier as well. What's especially odd about the news uh, is that it hasn't gotten... This hasn't come alongside a broader announcement or an explanation at the PlayStation blog as to why the controllers will be uh, more expensive four years into this console cycle rather than less. Uh, In the past, hardware would get cheaper uh, the older it got with price cuts to the PS3 and PS4 helping new players finally upgrade. Uh, But this time around, the things are get this time around. Things are going in the opposite direction. So, yeah, that's. Again, insane. Yeah. They're, God, they're just, at at what point is this like a failure in manufacturing? Like, like, I understand that uh, the economy's bad and yeah. uh, uh, it's hard to uh, uh, find the materials for all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, it's been like that for a really long time. Yeah. And you just... Raise the price of your console. You're releasing a new one at an insane price. Yeah. Uh, you gotta fix your manufacturer. Yeah. You know, it's a controller that's been out for four years. Four at years. This point. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, why now all of a sudden is it five dollars more? Yeah. They always have weird price structure where, like, the white and the black ones were like cheaper than all the other ones, mm-hmm. and now they're all like cost the same price, and they're all like. No, I think I think the white one was is is still five dollars cheaper. <laughs> They raised the price of all of them right. by five dollars. Yeah, I don't get it. Yeah, it's not not fun. Um, let's talk about uh, Sony CFO thinks PlayStation doesn't have enough original IPs. Hey, this is the thing that we were just talking about. Yeah, it is, but it also isn't. Uh, Sony leadership reckons that the company doesn't have enough original IP, including PlayStation, uh, including its in its PlayStation divisions. Uh, the group is making a multi-billion-dollar investment into creating original content in a bid to widen its share of the entertainment industry. And in an interview with Financial Times, expressed its desire to foster new IP from the beginning. Uh, whether it's for games, films, or anime. We don't have that much IP that we fostered from the beginning, says Sony CFO um, Hiroki Totoki. Uh, I've I've heard that name before, I and I've laughed before. <laughs> As he told the Financial Times, we're lacking the early phase of IP, and that's an issue for us. The to- Totoki added that Sony as a whole has been better at finding new audiences for existing popular IPs and thinks uh, that the company won't grow without creating content from scratch for higher returns. While new IP is certainly welcome, these comments are a little puzzling when it comes to PlayStation because the company has numerous game franchises that it fostered from the beginning, or could have, but they have since been abandoned. Look no further than... 
Uh, look no further than the featured image above for some hints. Heck, one of PlayStation's biggest new hits from the PS4 era, Bloodborne, has pretty much been left to die. At least that's what it looks like right now. Meanwhile, games like Until Dawn get another lease on life in the form of a remake. We're not quite sure who asked for that. Um, yeah, Bloodborne yeah. is uh, an exclusive. That's the thing that, like, what does he mean by, like, uh, if they don't have enough original IP? Every, they have a lot. Yeah, they just... <laughs> Every console generation, with I think the exception of God of War, every console generation, they scrap all the old franchises and move on to like a, a bunch of new ones. PS2 era had Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank, Sly Cooper. Like those were like their core franchises. PlayStation 5, you got Concord. Exactly. <laughs> the PlayStation 3, when they moved over to that, they scrapped all their old ones and they went to Uncharted, The Last of Us. Killzone became a bigger deal. Uh, f- what, what was the other Here one? Here is a list of PlayStation 5 only games. Remember, this console came out four years ago. Yeah. This is the list. There are a total of 21 games. Wow. And how many of those are available on the PlayStation? No, PlayStation 5 only? Yeah, but this includes The Last of Us Part 2 remastered. Oh. Yeah. So uh, most of these... This says Marvel's Wolverine. That's not even out yet. That's not out yet. So some of these include games that aren't out yeah. yet. Some of these include games that are remasters. Uh, they don't have Spider-Man 1 remaster. Because that's on PC. Oh, it's not on PlayStation 5? It's on PlayStation 5, and it's also on PC. Oh, so, it, oh, so it's not only on... Yeah. Okay, I understand. But, okay. like, Infamous was the other one I was thinking of on the PlayStation 3. Like, they got yeah. one infamous game on PS4, and then that was it. That was just to entice you into the new system with a familiar IP, and then never speak Well, they tried again. a new cool IP, and it was Concord, and they fucked it up. Right. Um, <laughs> I mean, we got Astrobot, and that's great. We got great. Astrobot. That's Astrobot's well. awesome. We did get two Horizons cross-generation, you know? True. True. But, like, yeah, Sony's not good at, like, staying with their original IP across different console cycles. But is Sony even doing bad? Like, I have not been liking what Sony has been doing. Right. But I feel like they're selling stuff. And they're doing fine. Sony is doing better in the game space than Microsoft is, certainly. Yes. Uh, As long as, I mean, uh, are are they keeping afloat? Is money good for Sony? Because it looks, as a fan, it looks like they're fucking everything up. But honestly, I don't think they're losing money or anything. I don't think they're hurting. But, like, I know things have been, like, on the softer side compared to what it has been, you know? Yeah, I uh, I know that we're slowing down with like game releases and stuff, but yeah. honestly, I think that uh, people just don't have the interest like they used to. Yeah, no, certainly not. I think like bringing back some of the classic franchises would help, or at the very least, making them playable on PlayStation Five, because like you know, make making people aware that you can play Infamous on your PlayStation Five would be a big deal yeah. or like the kill zone games the god of war games you know the classic ones having uh boost modes and boost upgraded mode. stuff to get uh was it playstation 4 games boosted yeah. on playstation yeah. 5 that uh, fa- playstation 5 pro i'm sorry that's great yeah that's really cool something that xbox did at launch yeah but uh we like to see that stuff. yeah so that's good uh I don't know. Also, 3% of PS5 owners have a PlayStation Portal, (laughs) which is, uh, that is, I mean, I knew this was going to be a specialized piece of equipment, but that is so goddamn low. Yeah. Uh, That's a a fucking abysmal attach rate. Yeah. Uh, Mac Piscatella of uh, Circana recently said via Blue Sky uh, that he has revealed that fewer than 3% of PlayStation 5 owners in the U.S. own a PlayStation portal as of the end of July. I don't think I've ever clicked on a Blue Sky link. It would freak me out. See the butterfly. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about PS Portal. While it has performed above expectations so far, there's still plenty of room to update. Uh, at the end of July, fewer than 3% of U.S. PS5 owners uh, had purchased the portal. Could be an area to watch closely for the holiday. Uh, source, Circana Retail Tracking Services. VG Charge estimated that the PS5 um, 
estimates, sorry, VG Charts estimates have the PlayStation 5 at 21.14 million units sold through the US at the end of July. That will put the PlayStation Portal at a maximum of 634,000 units in the US. So just you know, under a million. Yep. Uh, he Matt Piscatel goes on to say that the PlayStation Portal could be uh, an attractive gifting option for people. It could, it honestly could be. Yeah, I want to shit on the portal a lot because I hate it. But yeah. uh, that's, I mean, if somebody has a PlayStation Five and they like their PlayStation Five a lot, um, I could see a world where people would be uh, excited to receive a PlayStation yeah. Portal. Uh, I still think there's much better ways to remotely play your games, mm-hmm. but most people aren't going to want to fuck around. And a PlayStation Portal, uh, it's not. That much fucking around to get, yeah. it, to get it to work. People will be disappointed. Mm-hmm. It's very easy to get disappointed with the PlayStation Portal because you think you can do a lot of things that you can't. Um, Allegedly, it's better now. Like, but I don't know. I'm going to try it because I'm playing Astro Bot yeah. and I don't want to play it on the PlayStation 5. I saw somebody, I think it was on the Steam Deck subreddit, saying that they beat Astro Bot with remote play on the Steam Deck. Okay. And on the Steam Deck, if you remote play using, uh, I think it's Chiaki, you get HDR. Really? Through the Steam Deck OLED. Interesting. Yeah, and you don't get that on the portal. So that sounds cool. I'm going to try to bounce between the two and see which one's better. Uh, I only set it up last night because uh, I've been playing Star Wars Outlaws. And let's do a little aside about Star Wars Outlaws. I uh, was playing that, and uh, the fucking goddamn uh, Ubisoft Connect doesn't automatically cloud sync. It oh. did the first time. I don't know what happened. The first time, it unless maybe I replayed something and right. didn't realize it. Um, no, you have to do it yourself, and uh, oh, that, that was uh, a pain in the ass. That for me to do. Uh, The worst thing about Star Wars Outlaws is Ubisoft Connect, and I honestly think that the review score should be lower because of Ubisoft <laughs> Connect. If, you, if, if you're talking about the PC version, yeah. it should, the launcher should be taken into account. Well, I think, you know, on the topic of the review score, I think reviewers were already handicapped because they had six days to review it. And that's a big open world game. You can't really review a game like that in six days. Yeah. And I think that affected a lot of people's review score anyway. So now, now you add it to it, the, you know, the launcher that that just makes it look even worse than what the game actually is you yeah know? yeah no i'm not uh ha- i actually kind of like the game yeah uh but I, I am not happy with that launch right uh yeah. wood in the chat says i'm in the three percent of, of people who bought the playstation right. portal so is he he says mine is still broken from when they forced me to update it a few months ago so he uh, he, he got forced an update and it is a known thing that it stops working with uh i think wi-fi 6 routers or something mm. it just yeah it was just like nah okay uh i thought they fixed that but i don't know i mean mine connected this morning when i was trying it yeah. out and uh i have the same router as him so i don't know what the fuck the problem <laughs> is. um i was remote play on the odin too i don't know i haven't i haven't well did there, i think i tried it Look at my Odin 2 video. I, don't, I didn't try it on the mini, I don't think. Um, what else? Uh, Any more PlayStation you news? You want to jump to uh, Star Wars Outlaws while we're still... Uh... Yeah, sure. All right, I'll move that up. Uh, Ubisoft slump. Uh, Star Wars Outlaws fails to turn things around, and Exify numbers are sliding, and we still don't know where the sands of time are. <laughs> oh, Yeah. The launch of Star Wars Outlaws should have been a triumph for Ubisoft, a milestone moment heralding a turnaround in the company's fortunes, but on the financial front, at least, it hasn't really worked out that way. Outlaws has been generally well-received by critics, but sales don't appear to be meeting initial expectations, and instead of seeing a, a surge of Ubisoft share prices have tumbled following the game's release to its lowest since 2014. Ubisoft was banking heavily on Star Wars Outlaws, saying that in its most recent financial report that gameplay previews were not only praised by players and critics alike, but also highlighted the cutting-edge capabilities of our game engines. As we we progress through fiscal year 25, 
all of our efforts are focused on successfully launching our promise, our promising new releases and positioning them as long lasting value drivers for Ubisoft while continuing uh, the transformation of our gen of our organization, says Ubisoft CEO Yves Guillermo. Uh, we are excited about the future and confident in the sustained uh, progress of our turnaround throughout the years. But Reuters report uh, says that sales of Star Wars Outlaws are sluggish, quoting J.P. Morgan analyst Daniel uh, Kirvin as saying that the game has struggled to meet our sales expectations despite positive critical reviews. Uh, Kirvin also lowered his sales expectations uh, through the end of 2025 from 7.5 million units to 5.5 million units. That uh, sucks. Yeah. I thought it would have done fine. I am surprised. But Ubisoft has been in a rough spot. Yeah. They, part they, of, they frequently are uh, not meeting the expectations. Part of me is surprised because I thought like, you know, the casual Star Wars player would like just see that and hear like open world Star Wars and think like, oh, I'll hop on, you know, play play that or yeah. whatnot. You know, I guess because it's not like it's only on PS5 and Xbox series and PC. It's not on like older generation systems. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's, that's still a handicap for a lot of that's people. True. Um it is a little hard to run on certain PCs too. Yeah. Like you need a pretty decent uh, machine yeah. to, to do it. I think also too, the fact that like star Wars is kind of at a low point right that, now. That like also even, even people who still like star Wars, like kind of feel like star Wars is in a rut right now. <clears throat> um, the fact that people are genuinely burnt out by Ubisoft games. Cause how many times can you release Assassin's Creed in different, in different styles, be it Assassin's Creed 23 or Far Cry or Watch Dogs or Ghost Recon, you know, they're all the same game. They're, they're all the same. They all run off of the same backbone and they all mechanically have the same stuff. You do yeah. the same things in all of these yeah. games. Uh, and <coughs> it's getting <coughs> rough yeah. and it's not, we're not like okay with that. And mm -hmm. I knew that going into this, like I've been burned out on Ubisoft stuff and all this stuff <laughs> that I fear about Ubisoft is true in this game. Right. Things are janky. <laughs> it's got the same sort of janky climbing as Assassin's Creed. Mm -hmm. Like you'll you'll try to like jump on something and it just won't latch onto it and then you'll die and then yeah. you'll have to do it again. You'll do the exact same thing and it'll work all of a sudden. Yeah. Uh there's like stealth takedowns and stuff, and there, there's, there's this one thing you do. You get your little guy, the little, the Nicks. little the Nicks. You yeah. get the little guy, and you hit the left bumper, and then he grabs something, or he could take some, or he can distract somebody so yeah. you can take him down. Like he cuts him in the face, like oh, what's that? So this, this is a mechanic that happens throughout the whole game. There'll be two guys. Mm -hmm. So Nicks gets one. You take down the other. And then you take down the guy that Nicks is on. Right. So you distract the guy while you take down the other guy, and then you take down the other guy. That happens all the time. Right. What keeps happening to me is Nix is distracting one guy. Mm -hmm. I go to take down the other guy and I'll be right in front of him and I'll press the X button and I'll punch the other guy. In the face. <laughs> so then the guy that I was trying to right. take down just starts fucking shooting me. Right. That happens all the time. I'm nowhere near the other guy. Yeah. And your character will just like levitate over, yeah. over there. That a lot of janky broken shit like that happens. There was another area where you have to send Nyx through a like a like a through a window to like open a door for you. Uh -huh. And the fucking little prompt just would not come up to right. send Nyx. I had to I had to like position myself in the perfect way. And this mm -hmm. is part of a scripted event. It's part of like right. a main story thing. So that should absolutely <clears throat> happen. I am also now just realizing <clears throat> that I'm about six hours into the game. Mm -hmm. I just met this person for the first time, the person <laughs> on the cover. Yeah. And the way that you meet them is they just appear. Oh. And then they go away. Okay. They appear, they go, run. And then they disappear. <laughs> and that's all you see of them. And I, I, I'm like, I've seen that guy before. Where have I seen that guy before? Yeah. And it's the fucking cover of the game. <laughs> I'm six hours into the game. Okay. The story, at first I was like, the story uh, is like kind of not important. Like it's yeah. not interesting. I'm just kind of playing the game because I want to be in Star Wars. Mm -hmm. The story is bad. I <laughs> played a part last night where I was like, this fucking doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And it is stupid. So these are the reasons why Ubisoft games right. aren't doing good. 
uh, their games are bad. <laughs> They've got shit in it that shouldn't be happening anymore right. in this year when they have so much experience making games. They just keep making the same game over and over again. But it's Star Wars, so I right. like being in Star Wars. Well, Star Wars Outlaws is not entirely to blame for Ubisoft's troubles. The company's share price has been falling since early 2021 from a high of 94 US dollars to just 16 US dollars. Oh my That's God. been driven by years of difficulties, including cancellations of numerous in development games, struggles to complete high profile projects, uh, Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake, and tepid reactions to games that it does manage to release. Mid cap partners analyst, um, Charlie Louis uh, Palladay cites X Defiant in the Reuters report as one of the recent examples of a Ubisoft game failing to find an audience. Following a strong launch driven by positive word of mouth, uh, Palladay said interest in the game has not held up. X Defiant's viewership numbers on Twitch have also fallen dramatically. According to Twitch Tracker, uh, viewers have, stum- have slumped from a high of more than 203,000 in May to just 14 hundred right now you can't just make a call of duty game i know you can't just do that they keep trying everybody keeps trying x defiant was kind of huge when it came out yeah because they paid a lot of twitch streamers yeah and the twitch streamers made it seem like it was really good Mm -hmm. and then uh once those dollars stopped flowing in they all immediately switched back to call of duty Mm -hmm. i was watching all these people play X Defiant, and I was like, I really don't understand yeah. what the appeal here is because it just looks like a shitty Call of Duty, and I already don't want to play Call of Duty. Yeah. Uh, so, f- I mean, the article goes on. 2020 also saw allegations of widespread sexual misconduct and harassment at the company, sparking an investigation and promise well, uh, and promise of a structural it? shift. Uh, f- the notably Yves Gilmo, who pointed the finger at other employees he said had betrayed the trust uh placed he placed them in. Guillermo remains at the head of Ubisoft, even though people have been calling for his resignation, uh, because all that stuff happened under his watch. Ubisoft has also made bad bets on broader technology within the gaming world. Its early NFT dabbling in Ghost Recon Breakpoint was a bust, although it's not ready uh to give up on the idea of digital ownership just yet. Uh, and earlier this year, it announced a slowdown of VR development following the disappointing sales of Assassin's Creed Nexus. Yeah, I mean, the uh, me playing Outlaws makes mm-hmm. me not too interested in Assassin's Creed Shadows anymore. Because, yeah, because uh, you, you got your Ubisoft game this year. Yeah, and it's going to be the same. It's yeah. going to be... All you do in, in Outlaws is fucking stealth takedowns yeah. and climb shit. And, you know, mm-hmm. that's... Assassin's Creed. Although I'd imagine it might be a little better to Assassin's Creed. But I saw that preview and I was like, man, this looks the 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 traversal in Assassin's Creed looks the same as it always does. Yeah. Except you there's some backflip animations. Yeah. There. Um Yeah. So I do not I d I don't I don't know. I they just gotta make unique games. I, I that's it. That's that's your answer. Yeah. Didn't uh Rayman didn't uh Mario plus Rabbids do good? The second one didn't do as good as the first one. Right. But like, you know, like you said, like they need to make more unique games. The Prince of Persia remake is stuck in limbo right now. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to be getting a new Splinter Cell, which was allegedly not going to be an open world sandbox The 2D Prince of Persia did good. Yeah. They, had, they, they made two of them for they some reason. They made two reason. of them, yeah. But the Sands of Time remake is still up yeah. in the air. And again, like... But that's just going to be Assassin's Creed. Well, they don't... That's the thing. Like, it shouldn't be. Yeah. Sands of Time is already a perfect game. Just do that again with better graphics. They yeah. can't seem to do that. And I don't know what's going on with Splinter Cell. They promised us it's not going to be an open world game. It's going to be an open world game. Yeah, I really don't want that. Yeah. Star Wars Outlaws makes it seem like it's an open world game. It is not. It's very linear. And yeah. I kind of like that, though. Yeah. So one of these buttons here... Backlog, 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 backlog. backlog. We can't hear it. Yeah. But we, we nailed it, though, everybody. I don't know why we can't hear it. Hi, guys. Hey. Welcome to the Backlog. This is a show where... This is a segment of the show where we go through our entire video game collection, every game we've ever bought, we put into an Excel spreadsheet, and today we're going to pick one at random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we've played it. Oh, How many games do we have on that 972. list? 972. A lot of games we've got yeah. to add to that list. 336. 336, and that is 
the Mega Man X Legacy Collection for the Switch. Interesting. Yes. We just did... We did the Mega Man Anniversary Collection for the PlayStation 2. And that was the regular Mega Man. Regular Mega Man. Regular Mans. old Mega that, Man. And that was Mega Man 1 through 8, so it wasn't even like the whole series. Okay. The Mega Man X Legacy Collection is... What is it? Legacy is Mega Man X 1 through... I think that's Mega Man... Uh, There's X, two of them. There's... Yes. There's Le- Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1 and 2. And that covers like what? Eight games combined? Combined it's eight. Yeah. I think this is only one through four. Okay. Did you not get both of them? I just assumed... I, got, I definitely got this one. Okay. Because I played this one. Okay. I only played through X and a little bit of 2. Um... That's the thing with like the, the current round of like Mega Man Collection... Mega Man Legacy collections that Capcom has been doing because they're doing them for all the Mega Man series, but they release them in two parts, like part one and part two. Yeah, but like people just wind up buying both of them. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why they do yeah. that because they want you to, to to get both of them. Yeah. Uh, this game was cool. I think it had filters. Am I wrong? Did it have uh, uh like like CRT filters? I believe so. There weren't a lot of retro games on the Switch at the time when this was yes. uh, coming out. This yes, came- this is one through four. Yes, uh, this came out in 2018. Yeah, so uh, I don't think there were any Switch Online No, I think that was then. before Switch Online. Yeah, so this was, uh, there were a couple of, yes, here are the filters. Yeah. And they were pretty decent. Yeah. Uh, so at the time, this was like a really big deal when this came out because it was retro games on the Switch and we yeah. didn't have those. Yeah. Uh, and this collection did a pretty decent job of uh, having the the pixels be scaled perfectly, yeah. having filter options, even though they were pretty minimal. Uh, it was still better than what other companies were doing. Yes. Uh, in terms of the games, uh, these are definitely some of the best Mega Man games, period. <laughs> Mega Man X is the best Mega Man game, right. period. Yes. It's the one that I tell everybody to just jump in and play. Yeah. So uh, I really like Mega Man comparatively i haven't played a lot of mega man games yeah uh mega man x though is incredible uh and in this it's just mega man x i don't know what what else we're, we're, we're saying i, I mean, played this game yeah, on a million like, different platforms yeah and I, I feel like we have mega man x on super nintendo so if we ever get to that then like what are we gonna say about that one game well yeah. all right so you played a little bit of x2 Correct. How does that compare to X1, or can you not really speak to that? Um, it's pretty much the exact same. It's it's uh, the, it, back on. It kind of uses all of the same assets and stuff yeah. for like Mega Man and whatever. Yeah. Uh, so there's like new robot masters and stuff. Uh, there's right. some new abilities, I think, but okay. for the most part, it feels like just an extension. It's like the Sonic and Knuckles to sonic 3 got it uh it's just an extension of mega man x1 which is fine because mega man x1 is awesome so mega man x2 is also awesome right uh i played more of it on my me you mini uh but i still haven't been i'm like towards the end but i still never never got through the whole thing uh there are different, like, what do you call it? Like, like orders. orders, like yeah. what we see here. Uh, I think I just turned them completely off. Yeah, always turn them off. They're always yeah. ugly. They always distract. Just, Especially now with OLED TVs. Yeah, just switch use, OLED. You can have problems. Yeah, just use the standard uh, black bar pillar yeah. box and you'll be fine. I think this game also has save states. It does. Uh, yeah. Both volumes allow you to play in either the English or Japanese releases, can contain several screen sizes and filtering options. A save feature was added for X1, uh, X2, and X3. Although the password system is also retained, an easier rookie hunter difficulty has been added to all games, which has damage received. In games from X4 onward, Rookie Hunter also makes spikes less damaging and makes bottomless pits non-lethal. However, playing on Rookie Hunter difficulty locks the player out of earning some in-game achievements. A new gameplay mode, X Challenge, allows the player to fight two Mavericks from X through X6 at once uh, with some of these battles exclusive to a single version. The collection also features an extensive multimedia gallery including original trailers, merchandise images, uh, concept art for all eight games, and the Day of Sigma animated short from Mega Man Maverick Hunter X. Yes. Uh, and that is a very cool animation. Yeah. Um, 
save states are important uh especially in a game like this yeah so uh it, the game's not that forgiving yeah. uh there is a save function in the original game it is just a password yeah so it's kind of a pain in the ass so i Safe states are, even if you want to have the original experience of, of playing the game, if you don't want to play it on easy mode, which is sometimes what safe states are, uh-huh. uh, being able to just hit the save state button when the password screen comes up is great because yeah. I'm not importing a password every time I want to play yeah, a stupid no. game. Uh, it's it's freaking 2024. Um, yeah, so this game's great. Uh I think X4 might be some people's favorite Mega Man game. I oh, have not gotten there yet. A lot um, of I we have X4 on PlayStation. I yeah. Yeah. People say skip X3 because uh X3 I think is made by a different uh team or something. I know that X3 is a weird one in the series cuz it's like got a very specific chip that like is hard to emulate on like modern like hardware and stuff. It was like very specific to the Super Nintendo. Not every game had that. Um, and according to this, um, this collection uses specifically the Super Nintendo version of X3, not the PlayStation version that was like Japan exclusive. Oh, for a while. yeah. So I wonder what the differences. I don't know if there's much of a difference. Um, I mean, there must be. You're going from uh, yeah. uh, chip to a uh, disc. Disc, yeah. X4 was the first fully playable Zero game. Yes, you can play a Zero in that one. Everyone yeah. loves Zero. Yes. And I hear X4 has a great story. Everybody loves X4. So yeah. uh, you're getting, again, some of the best Mega yeah. Man games here because I think X1 is the best mm-hmm. because I've never played X4. And everybody who's played every Mega Man game says that X4 is the best. Right. So you're getting both of those games in this collection. Yeah. Game one through four. Uh, the PlayStation version uh, adds additional animated full motion video cutscenes, rearranged remix music tracks, and completely different sound effects from the original SNES version. Do I have X2 Legacy Collection on the list or no? It just says the Mega Man Legacy Collection. X Legacy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think, I think I might not have gotten the second one. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, we have some of those games because those were the PlayStation yeah. 2 games. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I kind of liked uh, Mega Man 7 and 8 in a weird way. Mega Man yeah. X 7 and 8 in yeah. like a weird, charming way. They were not great games. No. Uh, there were other games that uh, deserved to be higher on the list of, mm-hmm. of great Mega Man X games. But I remember we played, uh, I think it was 8. I played it at Jake's house. Yes. Um, and I really liked it. I, yeah, I was, it was enjoying tough it. Tough as nails. But yeah. I was enjoying it in like a Sonic Adventure type of way. Yeah. Like I just like these characters and I think it's kind of cool and quirky to see it in 3D yeah. and all the stuff that they're trying to do. Well, I wouldn't necessarily call it a great game. And X8 was a, a side scroller because X7, they tried experimenting with full 3D. Yeah, I think 8, they also did that. Like they had some stuff, right, but, but it, it wasn't. Uh, the, yeah. X7 did a lot more of it. They did yeah. a lot more full 3D stuff that was weird and people didn't like. Yeah. I would love to see a full 3D Mega Man game. Uh, oh, absolutely. But you got to make it really good. You can't, mm-hmm. you can't yeah, fucking I, yeah. do what you did in Mega Man X7. So I would say the Mega Man X Legacy Collection is awesome. I yeah. would say definitely give it a try. You have to play Mega Man X uh if you have not played Mega Man X. Yeah. Uh and then work your way up to 4 because people say 4 is the best one. Yeah. So I would say that this is probably the best Mega Man Legacy collection there is. It might be the best like it might be the best collection of retro games on the Switch period. Ooh. What else is there? Castlevania. Castlevania, um the Cowabunga collection, the Switch online stuff. In general. I'm excluding the Switch Online okay. stuff because okay. this was, first of all, before the Switch Online right. stuff, and also uh, you have to pay for this separately because yeah. it's Capcom. It's a, it's a different service. You got like the Disney collection. Disney that's collection, good. the Genesis collection. There is the Genesis collection. Genesis yeah. collection is pretty good. Yeah. This is kind of neck and neck with the Genesis right. collection. The Genesis collection is great. Uh, this is some of the best games yeah. of all time. The Genesis collection has some of the best games of all time. This might have bigger deals, I would say. Right. Uh, so... This is definitely uh, something everybody should. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. Thanks for watching the All backlog, right. everybody. You should check out Mega Man X Legacy Collection. Come to a podcast sometime. Podcast people, stay. Yeah. Everyone else, bye. Bye. All right. 
Uh, thank you, Filthy Casual XL, for the five months. Hey, guys, I haven't been able to watch you live for a bit, but I picked a good topic to come back to. The price of the PlayStation 5 Pro is absolutely too much for me. Unless my current PS5 dies, I don't feel like I need a need. I need an upgrade. Love the videos as always. Glad you do what you do. Oh, my God. Thank you so thank much. You. Yeah, like, even if your PS5 dies, like, get a regular PS5. Yeah. Dude, yeah, there's, like, no reason to get the Pro. I was playing Star Wars Outlaws in my living room and I was like, we need a TV upgrade. I need like I need like an HDR or OLED something. You don't have it? Your TV doesn't do HDR? It's all it's a old Black Friday, pre pandemic Black Friday special. So is mine and it does HDR. I think mine does HDR, but it's shit. It's shit <laughs> HDR. Um early TV is like uh, it's hard to tell if like it does HDR properly. Well, yeah, like in the beginning of the uh, current console life cycle, HDR meant a million different things. Right. There was a million different types of HDR, and most of them were fake and bad. Yeah. Um, and now I'm experiencing it with like the, the Steam Deck and, yeah. and even that new monitor I have, the LG one, yeah. it's fucking spoiled me. They, they look, everything looks so good. Yeah. On it. Uh, so playing on the TV, I'm like, this sucks. I'd rather play it anywhere else. Yeah. Um, but I... I my point is, if I get a nice new TV, then maybe I could see a world where I would want a PlayStation 5 Pro. Like, if I get, like, a fucking crazy expensive yeah. big-ass TV. The, uh, there was a... It was not really a game, but, like, on the Xbox One, there's no Xbox Series version of it, but on the Xbox One, there was a program called Insects. And it was essentially a an HDR tester for your TV. Ooh, okay. It was a CGI, like, thing... Where like you know two ladybugs are like flying around grass and stuff, and you can like pause it, turn the HDR on and off like in real time, and even like it'll highlight what is being enhanced by the HDR. What is this for? It's for X. It's for Xbox One. You can play it on Xbox Series, but they only made an Xbox One version of it. So, but it should still work on Xbox Series just fine. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say check that out because actually it did show you like what the HDR is doing. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I think that it's fake HDR on whatever TV that I... That right. The shitty old Samsung TV mm -hmm. that was like $500. But when I put HDR on the Steam Deck OLED and on my freaking... Yeah. Uh, even my old Gigabyte monitor, uh, it's very obvious with right. the differences. Uh, all right. Plow through some more news yeah. here. Uh, oh, let's talk about some handhelds oh boy that are let's let's do the handheld corner i'm moving yes. all this stuff up we're doing okay. the handheld corner uh we're gonna first talk about uh the retroid pocket mini and retroid pocket five so this was announced a little bit ago mm -hmm. but the pre-orders went up yesterday last night and yes. i pre-ordered both because i'm an asshole <laughs> uh this is from Time Extension. Over the last few weeks, Retro... We don't need to talk about all this. Yeah. Like, they're up for pre-order now. Uh, they're a little expensive, uh, I would say. The, uh, uh, the what is, which one is this? The Mini. The, the mini, mini is on top. It, why is... Okay. They, they, is there a problem? put a picture there. Uh, oh, there's the picture. The <laughs> Mini is $200. There's a little bit of a discount if you get like early bird mm -hmm. pricing or whatever. But for the most part, $200. Uh, it has the same chip in it. Uh, it's only got a four by three screen, but it's AMOLED, which is pretty cool. There you go. Uh, it's 960p, which I didn't know, and it's 3.7 inches. This is kind of cool. I actually kind of like a four by three screen. Most of the systems that this can play are only going to be four by three. So, yeah. uh, like your GameCube, like I don't need a widescreen GameCube. No. Same thing with PlayStation Two. Mm -hmm. PlayStation Two, not many games I'm going to want widescreen for. Um. And then there's also the Retroid Pocket 5, which is the same chip, but it's a 16 by 9 and it's 1080p. 1080p is nice. Um, yeah. Oh, wait. I'm, I'm being dyslexic. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, they're, they're, the they're both a Snapdragon 865. Okay. They're both the same chip. Uh, but I believe there is more RAM in... Yes. So the Mini has six gigabytes of RAM and the the new one, the 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 five has eight gigabytes of RAM. Right. So uh that's the big difference. Otherwise, they're pretty much the same thing. And that retails for two hundred and twenty dollars. So for twenty dollars more, 
you're getting a wider device. Right. Uh, for the most part, they're pretty much the same. Okay. Uh, I kind of like the the mini because again, I don't. I kind of like having a four by three screen. Yeah. I don't think I need that much. Uh, but I mean, sixteen by nine would be nice for like uh streaming games, playing yeah. more modern stuff. Uh, I've liked the previous Retroids. Uh, I think that they do release things a little too quickly but now we're looking at amber nick releasing things every four yeah. seconds and i'm like you know what never mind i appreciate it they release if retroid releases once a year i'm cool with that they did just release the pocket 2s or something so like they're getting a little crazy mm -hmm. but uh i don't hate this i think that retroid is some of the best value in retro game or uh, retro handhelds because right. uh it can play up to gamecube and playstation 2 it's android so you can play android games on it like dead cells uh, yeah. you can put emulators on it like uh yuzu ran kind of good so you can do switch games it's it's you know you're not going to be playing mario odyssey but you can play yeah. some pretty decent switch games on there um and you can stream uh remote play to your playstation you can do xbox remote play and whatever and, yeah. and it's it's pretty good for all of that and at 220 dollars uh that's a really good deal for the power that you get because yeah. The next comparable system is an Ein, and that is going to be over three hundred dollars. So, I do think that the value is there. They're a little cheap. Last, uh, the last one that came out had some shoulder button issues. The flip had a really bad hinge, so they're like n the manufacturing is a little cheap, mm -hmm. but it's easy to recommend because uh, because uh, it's got a lot of power and it's cheap. Mm -hmm. They have announced that these will be you'll be able to dual boot android and linux okay uh you're not going to be able to put like steam os on there uh it's not powerful enough to do that uh so i don't really see a reason to put linux on there uh mm -hmm. but that's something that other people are working on home brewing um and they are also overhauling their launcher so the home screen will look a lot different, which is good because they've been using the same launcher for like a long time and it's gotten pretty shitty by now. Right. Uh, so hopefully that's a lot better. So I'm interested in this. I will definitely have a video on it. It, it should be different enough to actually warrant a video. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I'm sure there will be one thing that's royally fucked up with it. Oh, because yeah. it's retro. Oh yeah, the biggest problem I had was the Pocket 3. Uh, the power button just stopped working. It's right. physically broken. Is there, that the one they sent you a replacement power button, or was that a different it one? It came with the replacement power button. Oh. And they said, put it in yourself. Because they <laughs> knew it was broken right. when they made them. Right. Uh, which is why I don't really like uh, Retroid, because they do weird manufacturing shit. They yeah. have a history of weird manufacturing shit like that. Um, so, we'll see. We'll see what is royally fucked up with this. So maybe I'd advise against pre-ordering it, but right. it might take if if you end up liking it, it might take you a while to actually get some. Uh, moving on, more handhelds. Ambernick this time around. Ambernick this time around. We got the RG four zero six V. Now this is the same as the four zero five V. It's got a four inch screen instead of a three point five inch screen. Right. Uh, it looks exactly the same as the four zero five V, except for the screen. And it's got a slightly better processor. Otherwise, it's the same fucking thing. And I'm pretty sure I reviewed the, 40, the, the, the 405V last year. Okay. And I don't think this is going to play games much better. Because the other one played GameCube games pretty decently. And it right. played like 3DS games pretty decently. So, like, I'm not interested in this at all. I'm skipping this one. They're not that cheap either. So... Yeah, I, I'm I'm out. Uh, I they emailed me about it and I emailed them back and said it's not different enough, man. Right. I'm not making a video. I can't just be an Ambernick channel. Yeah, I mean, like, and honestly, you got to take a stand at some point. Like they keep releasing the same thing over and over again. Like, yeah, yeah. and and other people are the same. Like Joey's retro handhelds. Uh, I think there's a YouTube channel just called Retro Handhelds. Uh, uh, Retro Game Core. Like all all these people like are just gonna be amber nick channels like yeah. dude you gotta like you gotta relax like we we don't need mm -hmm. this we don't need these every other week and this was uh this came out before people even got their 40 xxv 
yeah. before they even got they they might have purchased that and before they even got it in their hands this was announced yeah and that is fucked up also they need to take their time when they're making this stuff mm -hmm. the thumbsticks don't even work right and i bet you they're not even gonna work right on this they need yeah. to fucking relax and get things to work properly before they just announce new things Another one that I might actually be interested <laughs> in, we got the Acer Nitro Blaze 7. This one I might actually want to try. You want to just read the editor summary to save time? Yeah, where's that? It's up at the top. Acer Nitro Blaze 7 delivers fast and smooth gameplay powered by AMD Ryzen 8040 series processors with up to 39 uh, total AI tops, up to two terabytes of storage and 16 uh, gigabytes of LP DDR5X memory. Offers immersive and stutter-free visuals on a full HD 144 Hertz refresh rate ISP uh, touch panel paired with AMD Radeon uh, 780M graphics, Radeon super resolution and AMD FreeSync premium technology. Uh, customized Acer Game Space app integrates mainstream gaming platforms on a Windows 11 powered handheld and compact and lightweight design allows for a portable gaming anywhere, allows for portable gaming anywhere and ensures a lightning fast connections with Wi-Fi 6E support. So this is Acer entering into the PC handheld market. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen Asus, we've seen Lenovo, we've seen MSI, and now of course it's Acer. Uh, it is ugly as all sin. Mm -hmm. I don't know what sort of gamer world we're living in. Like, like the 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 gamer design is turned up to eleven here. Yeah. Um, I think it says on the back. It says like power, like on. But I don't know. It's very, <laughs> very dumb. I mean, if we're being honest, like all of these handhelds like look stupid. They <laughs> this all is look, the worst. Yeah, this is like. It says nitro. It says nitro, but no, there's other stuff over oh. here. <laughs> that says sport. Oh god. That says dynamic. Hold on, you can download the PNG. It's uh it's bad. It, it's yeah. it's a bad design. Um otherwise, everything is kind of the same as we've been seeing. It had the so the 48 the 8040 series processor here. Mm -hmm. is pretty much exactly the same as a Ryzen Z1 Extreme. The Ooh. only difference is uh, this has like some AI stuff that right. you don't, Who cares? You're, you're not going to use. Um, two terabytes of storage is pretty good. Yeah. So that's at least an upgrade from other offerings. Yeah. 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5X memory is the same as the Lenovo. Uh, and it's less than the Asus RG Ally X. Yeah. So uh, I'm not impressed by that. Uh, full HD 144 hertz, uh, which is good. That's only a little bit more than the original RG Ally. It's the same as the Lenovo Legion Go. Yeah. I did hear that this is a native uh, landscape display, though. I might have that wrong. Somebody, uh, somebody in the chat correct me if I'm wrong there, but that would be nice. Because the Lenovo does not, it's landscape. Right. Um, customized Acer Game Space app. It needs its own launcher because all of these have that. Uh, most of them are really bad. Uh, we'll see if Acer has one that's pretty decent. Uh, Wi-Fi 6E, I'm not, I'm not impressed. So the only thing about this that would really impress me is if the price point is there. And I fear that having two terabytes of storage is their way of trying to compensate for the price. Yeah. Yeah, I well, it says up to two terabytes of storage. Oh, so I'm mean, I'm sure there's like a a lower tier model that uh, won't have that. Okay, I'm not. Yeah, sure how that's gonna work. It needs to be vastly cheaper than what the RG Ally original is going for. Yeah, because this isn't even gonna meet the specs of the X. So, uh, I'm I'm whelmed. <laughs> I don't. I don't think this is going to be anything uh, too crazy. God bless you. Thank you. This ha it does look like it shares some ergonomics with the Logitech G Cloud. It has uh, two USB ports, uh, one at the top and one at the bottom. That is good. That should be standard like, yeah. on all of these things. Uh, I like that a lot. But again, uh, I don't know if I would. Uh, judging by specs alone, I'm not impressed. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to actually get my hands on it and see how the Acer game space works. And also I need to see the price because that's the biggest thing that would, uh, yeah, 
get me excited about this is if the price is there. It does have all Thunderbolt 4 ports, I think. Yes. Yeah, so that's nice. Uh, and lastly, for handheld stuff, we got AMD's Z2 Extreme chip. Yes. Early 2025. So this was new. I wasn't, I didn't even hear about this until yesterday. We don't mm. have to talk too much about this because I talked a lot about it on the Nerd Nest podcast. Right. You can go watch that. And uh, they, the Fox knows a lot about this shit. And I don't mm. know anything about any of this shit. He talked, he was very technical about it. Um, to summarize, uh, it's just the Z1 Extreme uh, uh, more powerful. They're claiming that it will bring you from 45 minutes of battery life uh -huh. to three hours of huh. battery life. So it'll be a massive yeah. improvement to battery life. Obviously, performance will be better and whatnot. Uh, and this says early 2025. So... Mm -hmm. Sometime next year, we will start to see the first PC handhelds with a Z2 Extreme. So I'd imagine next year, probably around the summer, you'll see the RG Ally 2 or yeah. something with the Z2 Extreme. And then uh, earlier in the year, you might see some other players start to jump in with their own versions. Maybe there'll be an updated Lenovo. Uh -huh. Updated uh, Steam Deck. Uh, well... It's unclear whether or not Valve is going to use something like this. Uh, uh, they are, I think, working with AMD to make something, yeah. uh, but it's unclear if they're going to use the same thing Got it. as all of the PC handheld manufacturers. And I don't think they will. I think they they've seen success uh, with their own right. proprietary thing, and and they'll probably continue that. Yeah. So I thought this seemed cool because I mean it's just like kind of like the the second generation of PC handhelds. Yeah. Uh, but then the fox uh, rained on my parade <laughs> because he said that this is just a copy of a laptop chip that exists. Yeah. And when you uh, copy it and call it something else, uh, it splits the drivers up. So they need to make uh, drivers for both. And it and having a niche like PC handhelds, yeah. now you have a Lenovo to make drivers and Asus to make yeah. drivers and now Acer to make drivers. It, it just splits it up even more. So uh, his point is, they shouldn't call it the Z2 Extreme. Right. They should just call it the laptop top chip that it is and just leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, and I understand that. Mm -hmm. But from a layman's point of view, uh, hey, man, uh, Z2, that's better than the Z1. Yeah. Upgrade, mm -hmm. new generation. So expect this in 2025. We're already on the second generation of PC handhelds, it looks like. And that's it for Bob's handheld. Okay. Now we're back on to real gaming news. Like Microsoft and Apple still arguing over cloud gaming. I noticed we don't have anything about the Apple event that happened yesterday. And that's because they didn't show a single game. They, they showed that one uh, uh, Chinese gotcha game. Yeah. And then they like quickly show like all the, uh, the AAA games you can already play. Yeah, games that are already out. Yeah. The only thing that confused me was I saw Resident Evil 2. And I was like, wait, we haven't heard about Resident Evil 2. Yeah. Well, but that has been announced. They still have not made Resident Evil 2. Right. Uh, for mobile. So I mean, are they going to? Because like they're like the other games barely sold. Yeah. So they really didn't give a shit about gaming yeah. for the first time in a long time in an Apple event. Usually yeah. they like show a game or two and and uh, they throw us a bone. But this I time feel they like didn't care at all. you know they they had a, a push for gaming for like a couple of years, uh, but like people still aren't like sold on like gaming on apple devices so they're like all right back in the bin with you i just think that this new iphone isn't very powerful compared to the it's not like a big jump it's no. not a big enough jump yeah. for them to bring in game developers and show off the they did say it's like five times more ray tracing but okay they showed the same exact demo that i've seen before though right they're like going through a hallway that's yeah. all ray traced i was like i remember this demo I don't know. I didn't watch it. I caught the highlights later. It's got a camera button now. I watched it. Uh, I, the camera button's cool. Yeah. I like that. Uh, there's a there's some cool directional audio for like video, which is yeah. cool. The audio and video has always been it been cool. Yeah. The shutter button's cool. When I take a picture on a camera, all of the cameras that I've ever had, that defaults to you can half press the shutter, uh -huh. and this new iPhone does it too. Uh, you can half press on a normal camera. You half press the shutter, and it will lock the focus, so you can like move. Yeah. You can focus on something and then reframe it. The new iPhone, I haven't seen them 
use it in that way yet. Mm. You can half press the shutter and like do some shit with it, but you I haven't seen you be able to do that yet. Yeah. And if you could do that, that's cool. None of this is enough for me to upgrade yeah. to the new iPhone. Now I'm still on an 11 and I'm still not upgrading. I didn't realize they haven't changed the design of the look of the iPhone since the 11. Well, the f- the island, the dynamic island is like the only thing. that. They oh, I, I, the, the images I saw were the back. Oh. The 11, yeah. they all, from since the 11, the back yeah. hasn't changed at all. All right, anyway, Microsoft anyway. and Apple are arguing over cloud gaming apps. Uh, earlier this year, Apple started opening up its app store to game streaming services like X, uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming and GeForce Now, freeing them from the restriction for freeing them from being restricted to web apps on the iPhone and iPad. Despite multiple changes to Apple's app store guidelines this year, Microsoft and Nvidia have still not published native cloud gaming apps for iOS, and Microsoft is now detailing why. Uh, Microsoft already said earlier this year that Apple's cloud changes don't go far enough for Xbox, but in submit but in submissions to the UK's Competitive and Markets Authority, the CMA, Microsoft now argues that Apple's changes in January, March, and April to its App Store guidelines, sections 4.9 and 4.7, aren't enough for it to operate a native Xbox cloud gaming app on iOS at all. Microsoft identifies a num- Microsoft identified a number of other provisions in Apple's guidelines that continue to limit its ability to distribute and operate cloud gaming uh, iOS native apps, namely guidelines and just list a bunch of numbers. Um, Microsoft filed in this in a CMA report in late July. Microsoft claims that Apple's guidelines still represent an obstacle to cloud gaming native apps because it apparently cannot comply with them, both technically and economically, if it incorporates third-party games into its Xbox cloud gaming service on iOS. Microsoft specifically calls out Apple's requirement for multi-platform services like Xbox cloud gaming to make all content subscriptions and features available within an iOS app as an in-app purchase. Uh, Quote, in fact, Apple's uh, in-app purchase uh, IAP commission fee is set at a level that is neither economically sustainable or justifiable. The 30% commission fee makes it impossible for Microsoft to effectively monetize its cloud gaming service offerings uh, given the guideline 3.1.3B prevents a different content uh, subscriptions or features, including consumables and multi-platform games uh, being offered to iOS users as compared to the content, subscriptions, and features offered on other platforms. As observed by the CMA and its mobile ecosystem a market uh, study, the 30% fee imposed by Apple on in-app purchases is the result of a lack of competition in the distribution of native iOS apps. Isn't the whole thing that uh, Epic was fighting for? Yeah. This is what uh, Tim Sweeney, friend of the show, because he liked to tweet of mine that one time. That's what he was trying to get at. So. I have to blow my nose. <laughs> yeah, what do they have? Like, w- w- do they have a leg to stand on here? Weren't they, like, kind of defeated in court over this? <laughs> yeah, I, like, I'm surprised that, like, this is still, like, a thing. Apple's still trying to, like, hold on to, like, whatever power they have. They're, yeah, so, I mean, the whole Epic lawsuit happened, and then... Uh, Apple had to kind of reform the way that they were doing things. They kind of lost a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but they are reforming, kicking and screaming. Yeah. They are they're trying their best to hold on to what little power that they have left. Yeah. Uh, and this is one of the ways that they're doing it. Because yeah. of the Epic lawsuit, we're allowed to have Game Pass uh, on iOS devices. But but there's still a lot of like hurdles to get through. Yeah, and they're they're fighting right yeah. now and then giving uh, you hurdles for example hurdles face. microsoft also takes issue with apple's 3.1.1 guideline uh which prevents ios app developers from linking outside to enable the purchase of subscriptions apple provides an exception for reader apps but cloud gaming apps don't qualify for this exception apple argues in its filing uh that it has never approved a gaming app to take advantage of the reader rule so it says app developers shouldn't be calling into question its approach to in-app purchases in the context of cloud gaming. So what's the alternative? Just forcing you to use web apps. Mark, mark up 30%. Yeah. They want you to like, yeah, it's basically they would have to mark everything up yeah. 30%. Yeah. That happened to me. Uh, that happened to me the other day. I was looking and it, I think it was Twitch. Yeah. Which a lot just, of apps are doing that now. Twitch is just straight up. Like, yeah, everything's 30% more. Yeah. Patreon so, did that, I think. Don't subscribe to us. Yeah. 
on the Twitch mobile app. Mm -hmm. Do it on the website. And they can't tell you that on the yeah. app or else you're breaking some sort of law. Yeah. Hannah texted me and she said, Trump says my immigrants are eating people's pets. I need a picture of you eating Zim for a tweet. So I'm <laughs> <laughs> and I know I have a picture of me eating Zim. So just like in life, you put him on a plate and like you try to He's gotta be eating every once in a while. Okay. Yeah, it's important. That's a Chihuahua thing you wouldn't understand. Yeah, no, I don't. Uh Okay. Apple argues that its support for cloud gaming via web apps and even cite, uh, cites two Verge articles that cover Microsoft's improvements to Xbox cloud gaming performances on iPhone and iPad, and more than 20 million people have used Xbox cloud gaming. It is notable that while CMA cites Microsoft's concerns in the working paper, Microsoft has chosen not to engage with Apple on cloud gaming apps since Apple's changes to the guidelines, Apple says. This lack of engagement comes despite Apple's affirmative outreach on new opportunities and tools for cloud gaming on iOS. I think, you know, what it comes down to is people want one app that they can do all their things with. You know, they don't want to like futz around with like web browsers and like save the page and whatnot. Like they want, they want like the Netflix experience. You go into Netflix, there's a library of movies. You pick the movie, you watch the movie there. They don't want to like jump through all the hoops. If they could just go to the app store, download the Xbox cloud gaming app and play all their games from there. That's fine. There's no problem. But like Apple is still making all the companies jump through all these like arbitrary hoops to get what they want. I don't mind having to use a computer or a web browser to renew my subscription and stuff. Right. That doesn't bother me. But like it becomes a problem because like, you know, I'm I mean, I mean, I'd rather not do that. Yeah. But if you're the alternative is paying 30 percent more, I would rather Microsoft just say uh, purchase like like have a big green screen that says, uh, please purchase the subscription on a web browser. I also don't think Apple truly understands what cloud gaming is. I think they yeah. think it's like, you know, an iTunes competitor in a way where like you have an app and like you go in and you buy the games and it like you can stream it over the cloud. Mostly like Game Pass is like a Netflix library where the games already like you already have access to the games. You're not buying the games. So, yeah, well, you would just need to stream them over the cloud. They just want as much control as possible. Right. And, and now you're getting a whole library that they can't uh, regulate and, and, and like approve like every yeah. little thing, which shouldn't matter because like the Microsoft approval process and Apple approval process, like, is it really that different? Yeah. No. Yeah. So it's stupid. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's dumb. Also, like if a game, like let's say Balacho, like let's say that comes to Game Pass, mm -hmm. like I have, if I have Game Pass, I'm still gonna want it on my iPhone. Right. Like I'm not gonna want to. Game Pass is just a convenience thing. I'm not gonna opt yeah. to play stuff on Game Pass over playing it on my on my phone. Maybe some mm. people would. Um. Maybe like I don't know, like fucking Assassin's Creed Mirage or something. But yeah. Like uh. It's 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 stupid. I, I think I think they're completely different, uh, and I I think that uh, it should absolutely be on the uh, iOS store. Yeah. All right. Black Ops Six early access won't have uh, wait it won't have campaign early access. Even it won't have mobile. single player, but it w it will have early access for multiplayer. Activision has confirmed there will be no campaign early access for Black Ops 6. In recent years, Activision has given those who pre-order a Call of Duty game, such as 2023's Modern Warfare 3, early access to its campaign. However, it is bucking the trend this year. In a statement shared with Eurogamer, an Activision spokesperson stated that Black Ops 6 uh, is fully focused on the Black Ops 6 team is fully focused on October 25th, and therefore everything will be released in one go. We are excited. We are excited about all the game has to offer across campaign, multiplayer, and zombies, uh, Activision said. This year, we've made the decision to ensure the community gets to dig in. The community gets to dig into any and all modes that they want at the same time. So we are back to one massive global launch on October 25th. Oh, that's great! As such, there is no early access beat this year for Black Ops Six. Just the countdown to launch. So they should title this No Early Access. Yeah, because like, I read that, and I thought that meant you can get the multiplayer yeah. early, but not the base game. Yeah, it's just a bad title. Yeah. So, oh, that's great. That's, great. A, that's a good thing. This is thing. great. Yes. I'm totally cool with yeah. this. 
I mean, I don't like they did a beta. Yeah. Like right. they did a beta Most this past house. weekend, and people seem to. I was gonna say people seem to like it, and I don't know. I don't know either. I've been hearing mixed things because <laughs> there's a. Uh, it's hard to keep up with. I mean, Call people of Duty. are playing it, and people are gonna keep playing it. But yeah. uh, the omnidirectional movement yeah. and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know if people are that sold on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind I'm a little interested in the single player because of the history. Yeah. Uh, so whatever. I, I great. All right, yeah. Finally, a com- like of all companies, Activision is doing something right. Yeah. In terms of like early access, the last game that released a little early was uh, Star Wars Outlaws. Yeah. And it broke everybody's save mm-hmm. files and everybody's pissed about it. Yeah. So, uh, we should learn from that. Yeah. Uh, PlayStation's 30th anniversary. Do we have anything to say about that? Uh, on December, uh, f- yeah, they're doing. Um, Sony's having a whole big celebration for the PlayStation's 30th anniversary this year. Uh, from October to the end of January, Sony Music will release classic PlayStation game scores on Spotify and digital storefronts. Uh, it's confirmed titles include God of War, God of War 2, God of War Ghost of Sparta, uh, which you can learn more about in the God of War Soccer Collection, which was last week's backlog. Uh, um, Twisted Metal, Starhawk, and Unit 13. A free trial of Gran Turismo 7 called My First GT will also be released. Tony hasn't set a date trial uh, for the trial yet, but is confirmed for holiday season on PS4 and PS5. So... There you go. So glad we're getting a PS5 Pro because they're releasing a trial for Gran Turismo 7 on the PS4. Jesus Christ. Uh, sports gaming enthusiasts should take note of September 21st and 22nd uh, will be free online multiplayer weekend for multiple sports games, including Madden, MLB The Show, NBA 2K, um, 2K25, and 2K24, and even fighting games like Tekken, Guilty Gear Strive, and UFC 5. And you won't need a paid PlayStation Plus membership. Uh just this is just the beginning as additional plans for PlayStation's 30th anniversary will be announced uh at a later time. So yeah, this the third this year marks the 30th anniversary of the PlayStation brand. The PlayStation 1 launched in 1994 in Japan and and we're old. We're old and we're very yes. old. Um for an anniversary that matters though, yesterday was the 25th anniversary of the launch of the Dreamcast in North America. That's why I'm wearing a Nintendo 64 shirt today. <laughs> <laughs> um, and to celebrate that, though, uh, Limited Run Games has launched open pre-orders on a lineup of hot Dreamcast merch. Hot! Ah! Uh, f- oh, that's why they did this? <laughs> yeah. I didn't even realize. Skateboard! Yeah. You got that's a skateboard, cool. a hat, a black t-shirt, which will go good with my white Dreamcast t-shirt. Uh, this is kind of generic. A little bit, Yeah. Card storage box? Excuse me. It's for all the you know your trading cards. This this is kind of kind of lame. It's literally just the Dreamcast logo. I mean, but the sweater, the sweatshirt says this, it's thinking nine nine ninety nine. Well, yeah, that's that the data came out nine nine ninety nine. Uh, I mean, it's not all generic. You, the, look, it's a lot of trading card boxes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Okay, I I I don't I don't look at a Dreamcast and go, man, I wish I could put all my trading cards <laughs> into something that's a Dreamcast. Uh, yeah, I just like look. It's nice when people acknowledge the Sega Dreamcast. Yeah, I yeah. I don't disagree. There are I... there are no bad games on the Sega Dreamcast. The skateboard's seventy five dollars. That's a lot for a skateboard, isn't? It? Is it? I feel like that's I reasonable see, for a skateboard. I want to see someone do a kickflip on that. You just have here Minecraft movie. I was trying to find an article that, like, talked about it, like, neutrally. And I couldn't really find one because they're all talking about how bad it looks. And I just wanted to, like, have a generic, like, the trailer for the Minecraft movie was re- as released starring Jack Black and Jason Momoa directed by the guy who directed Napoleon Dynamite. It, it takes place in whatever and whatnot. Uh, but all they talk about is how shitty it looks. It's weird that Jack Black is Steve. Yes. Uh, Jason Momoa looks weird. He's like styled weird. Yeah. Uh, it's weird. Yeah. But I don't hate that. Like, I think that that's cool to do something different like that. Uh, what I don't like is the hyper, like, the hyper, like, like realism that, that I mean, that's the wrong word for it. 
They like no, upresed like, everything. Yeah, they're trying to like make it like give it like realistic texture and features yeah, and stuff. And that's just not the style of Minecraft. Yeah. Like the whole reason Minecraft is as popular as it is is because it looks so visually interesting. Yeah. It's such a unique uh style for the 3D voxel. Look. And they just like took that out. Yeah, they, they removed that. They were like, people won't like this. It'll look too low resolution. People want this. But like yeah. That's the whole point is the low yeah. resolution. It looks cool. Like Yeah, that. like and even like, you know, Jack Black is playing Steve. Like Steve has a very distinct look. He's part of that like voxel look. Yeah. And now he just looks like Jack Black. Yeah. Like Jack Black didn't even do anything to like change his like appearance. He didn't shave his beard or cut his hair. He just looks like Jack Black. I kind of like that though. <laughs> I kind of I'm cuz I like Jack Black. So I like I like that it's just Right. It's like you expect Steve and you get fucking this guy. Yeah. Um, but it's all of the rest of the world that I yeah. think. I think that YouTube animators have done such a better job. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, they've done a really good job of keeping the style of Minecraft, but making it look really uh expensive like like yeah. up resed and uh the animations are really fluid and stuff they've done a good job doing that but keeping the style of minecraft where yeah. the movie just changed the style and made it shitty i forgot who i was talking to about this on twitter but like someone i was talking to someone about it and they said that they should have just like ripped off the lego movie and like of all the things that Minecraft could have done, like that's what it should have done. Cause like this one looks like it's trying to be like a generic, like, oh, we're in another world and we're gonna learn the value of friendship and stuff. When like the Lego movie was all about like how like playing with Lego and like interacting, like how we interact with it and like the creativity that comes from like creating Lego, uh building Lego towers and stuff. And that is literally the point of Minecraft. Yeah, so no, like it could that, have been anything, and instead it's whatever this is. I thought you meant the style of the Lego movie. Well, even that but too, because apparently, but, like, this was originally supposed to be directed by Rap, uh, Rob McElhoney of Always Sunny, and was going to be an animated movie. That's what it should have been. Like this yeah. mixture of like live action and then CGI just like clashes so hard. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't hate that it's a mixture of CGI and live action. The thing that I hate the most is, is the art direction. Is the art direction yeah. is, is very bad. I also take issue with like this people saying like, well, it's not for you. It's like a kid's movie. Kids are going to love it. And like, obviously it's not for me. I don't play Minecraft. I've never played Minecraft. I'm not interested in Minecraft. But like kids deserve good movies. Kids don't deserve junk. I don't like that argument because you're basically saying that children can't handle like more emotionally complex or thoughtful works of art it's okay to funnel them crap because yeah. you know they're just stupid kids you know when you look at some of the best kids animated movies or like kids movies in general you know things like moana or like anything from the disney renaissance or the lego movie or into the spider-verse so like those are all like really good like smartly made kids movies and it's it's already been proven that the Minecraft formula works. Yeah. Like it, kids already love it. Yeah. It's already a worldwide phenomenon. And again, if you're looking at a style that's not exactly the 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 game, but a little bit nicer looking, yeah. there's plenty of uh, hyper successful uh, YouTube uh, animations. There's mm -hmm. plenty of hyper successful uh, mods that, that make things look a lot nicer. They had all of the 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 stuff tested for them already they could have yeah. pulled from and instead they made their own thing and made it look like shit yeah so. so and yeah you know kids will like it because you know they don't know much better but you know when as they get older they will realize that like that does not hold up it is not good and they probably could have wished they would have gotten a better minecraft movie i got a 404 error uh from oh because oh, amazon amazon's in there okay i don't think so Rockstar tells Rockstar to go fuck yourself. 
This is funny. Uh, Martin Ware, founding member of Heaven 17 and before then, Synth Pop Pioneers, the Human League, tweeted to tell Rockstar to go fuck yourself after allegedly receiving what he called an extremely low offer to use uh, 80s classic Temptation in GTA 6. Uh, I was recently contacted by my publishers on behalf of Rockstar Games regarding the possibility of using Temptation on the new Grand Theft Auto 6, he tweeted. Uh, naturally excited about the immense wealth that was about to uh, head my way, I scrolled to the bottom of the email regarding the offer. It was uh, $7,500 for a buyout of any future royalties from the game forever. To put this in context, Grand Theft Auto 6 uh, gross, wait for it, 8.6 billion but uh think of the exposure go fuck yourself so what does that mean it grossed 8.6 billion it's not out yet i think he meant grand theft auto 5 okay like in total like yeah. i don't think i mean grand theft auto 5 sold uh 200 million units worldwide mm -hmm. so you can do the math 8 billion dollars in revenue sounds about right yeah and like it's completely understandable that like you know Rockstar is just giving you like a two month, a uh, two months working salary for a for a song that's gonna appear appear in their game forever. You know, when I first heard this, uh, I thought like I f my mind went to like uh uh like this. The game's so big, so many people are going to hear it. It could make a career. Right. And, like, I've never heard this person before. So I, my first thought was, like, I mean, 7,500, but think about how much you can get afterwards. Like, Dragon Force being on Guitar Hero made yeah. Dragon Force. I didn't realize this is an 80s band. These people are old. Yeah, also, too. They're at the end of their career. They don't They don't need to, uh, rejuvenation. <laughs> they, <laughs> they need money. Also, too, like, you know... <laughs> Making money in music is not the way it was back in the day, yeah. where you can just like go buy a CD or what, and, or like because they're streaming, they get like pennies on the dollar yeah. for like every stream, if that. Um, and it, where we go on to clarify that uh, the seven thousand five hundred dollars was for each writer of the song, so like it would be to it would total like uh, twenty two hundred. Oh, you mean it's split 7,500 would be... No, no, no. Uh, 7,500 per each rider for a total of 22,500. Three, three riders get 7,500 each. Yeah. Yeah. Which is still... Was that the offer they're giving or is that... So Rockstar's offer was yeah. to give each rider 7,500. Oh, okay, so that's more than that. That's still more, <laughs> but like that's still one person, you know, is getting, you know, not a lot compared to what Grand Theft Auto is going to make. Right. You know, I'm assuming like he doesn't necessarily want like to be paid every time the game is sold, but like something much fairer than that. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is why when they remake old games or re-release old games, it's a pain in the ass because everybody's got to yeah. get, get, they got to renew licenses mm -hmm. or do royalties or something. Um, that's a much better deal though. The, the, the twenty-two thousand. Uh, yeah, for for the that has to be split three ways. Yeah, um, it's still not great. Yeah. Uh, again, my opinion changed when I learned that this is an old band. Right. If it was like a new growing band like that could make their whole career well, even, being in Grand Theft Auto. I don't remember his name but like the guy who played Nico Bell in Grand Theft Auto 4 like made a big stink like this game sold a lot of money I have seen none of it like yeah. and I am the voice of the game yeah which you know he's got a point um all right last news uh Funko Fusion if you eat a KFC you can play as the Colonel Wow yeah man <laughs> Uh, Funko Fusion's latest character reveal is the KFC mascot founder and actual human being, Colonel Sanders. Uh, if you eat enough KFC chicken, you can play as him, though. Last year, uh, we were introduced to Funko Fusion, a third-person action game uh, starring Funko Pops from different franchises like Back to the Future, The Thing, and now apparently of uh, kfc on september 9th 1010 games the kfc released a short trailer showing off colonel sanders as he appears in the game at one point in the trailer sanders shoots an alien monster from the thing with pieces of fried chicken that he launches out of his uh striped red and white kfc bucket this is real this is happening and you can't stop it and you can play this on your playstation 5 pro yes 
think of all the ray tracing. Yes. Uh, in a press release about the crossover, 1010 Games explained that there will be three versions of Colonel Sanders in the game. The basic white suit version uh, will be included in the base game. The Chef Outfit variant will be available uh, free to KFC Rewards members. And finally, if you want to unlock um, and use the mech suit version of Colonel Sanders... <laughs> Uh, in parentheses in the article, a real man who once walked this earth, uh, you will need <laughs> 200 and uh, 250 KFC rewards points. That's about $25 worth of chicken. So if you want, if you want the full Funko fusion experience, make sure you start eating that KFC to get your KFC points to play as Colonel Harlan Sanders. I don't think anybody is fucking playing that. <laughs> no. Do I have a tweet of the week button? Tweet of the week. Yep. Tweet there of the you week. go. Tweet of the week. This is from Jordan Midler, and it says, "Say sorry to him <laughs> right now," and it's the launch prize of a PlayStation. Yeah. Uh, and he's right. Yeah. I mean, we didn't like it then, and we don't like it now. Yeah. So you know, yeah. what? so really, nothing's maybe changed. He's not. Maybe yeah. he's not right. All right, now. We're going to talk to you guys. Yes, let's start with people who have comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. But first, Hanuman K1. Thank you for the 22 months. Oh, thank you. Uh, for, foreign user says, oh yeah, podcast time. Yes, it is. Charlie Fenn says, Bob, you'll probably address this next week, but are you playing Astro Bot? More importantly, are you using the new controller? I'm not using the Astro Bot controller. I would have bought it if it had a screen in it. Yeah. But I'm not that. I got too many controllers. I don't need another <laughs> controller. Uh, I was using the DualSense Edge. Ooh, fancy. Uh, I was playing on the actual PlayStation 5. Mm -hmm. I streamed it uh, Sunday. You can watch it on Twitch if you're, yeah. if you're quick enough before the VOD disappears. It's very good. It's great. Uh, I think it's a little short, uh, which is great. I'm totally yeah. fine with that. I'm gonna. So the the dual sense does a lot of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, every time you take a step, gives a little force feedback. Oh uh, yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, I'm gonna try it on the portal, which has a lot of the same dual sense features, but yeah. uh, it might get weird. Uh, I'll I'll see how that works. Mm -hmm. Caleb Fox says, I bought my car over three years ago, but I still vividly remember how the salesman was telling me that Horizon Zero Dawn was one of the greatest games of all time. I'm sure it's a good game, but is that is it really that good? I mean, it's okay so far. I'm not hating it. You know, I just feel People like... People really it, love that game. Yeah. It no, is. I know. It could be one of the best games of the generation. I think the generation... Kind of didn't have a lot of great games though. Well, it's the the Horizon Zero Dawn was the PS4 generation. Yeah, and that had a lot of good games compared to this generation. Compared to this generation, yeah. especially. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, I'm playing it. It hasn't like become like I haven't hit the oh I get it now moment. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Seems like fucking third did, person I, action I, game fodder to me. I did unlock the ability to. Uh, take over one of the mechanical horses. You can ride one of the mechanical horses, so that's fun. And you love horses, yeah. So I'm such a horse girl. Um, <laughs> what? I, so I got to a part where, like, I finally, I think I'm finally like uh, out about to like enter the world, like the the full and open world, even though it's having me do linear path stuff. And as soon as I like, I leave the the village, like the first side quest appears on my map, and it's somebody like on top of like a rock formation, like high up. And there's no way for me to get up there to accept the mission because I don't have the grapple hook yet. Mm. But like, why, why put that there? To tell you, like, oh, you got to come back. But why not put a side mission that I could actually do to introduce me to the concept of side missions? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I understand, like, putting things there for me to come back to. But, like, if you want to introduce me to a side mission, give me a side mission I can access. Yeah. I'll give credit to Star Wars Outlaws because uh, I want to just plow through the game. Right. But uh, they, I came across a side mission that was like, hey, if you want to, there's a lot of things you got to unlock and it makes you play like a little mini game to unlock it. Yeah. They're like, hey, if you want to uh, upgrade your slicer, which is the thing they use to unlock stuff. Yeah. If you want to upgrade your slicer, there's a mission for you. And I was like, ooh. 
I do want to upgrade yeah. my slicer. So now I like I'm tracking a side mission yeah. and I never I don't want to do side missions. So yeah. it's enticing me a little bit to like do a side mission yeah. while I while, if I'm like in the area, I'll do that while I'm doing a main mission. Steenar says, wait, so the games where you play as the childlike Toon Link are in the adult era, but Twilight Princess is the child era. Toon Link uh, is a uh, style. But he's still, like, younger. You know what I mean? How old is Toon Link? He's still, like, a, you know, a young child. He is 12 or 13. Yeah. How old is a uh, Link in he's like Majora's s- Mask? He's like 10, isn't he? 16 in Majora's Mask. No. <laughs> That's what Google's AI said. No, he's 10. He's 10. Yeah. Because like he's 17. As... I've been looking for cases where Google's AI is dead wrong. And here's, there you go. here's what. Everybody mark this in your calendars. Link is 16 years old in The Legend of Zelda yeah. Majora's Mask, according to the fake AI. I mean... I'm pretty sure. Thumbs down. I'm pretty sure, like, the Zelda timeline is just doesn't make sense. It was just Nintendo, like, trying to, like, put these games in order that, like, they think works. It, they, they, it doesn't. It, it, could it really be, doesn't. It could be that Toon Link is in the timeline as the adult Link. Like, yeah. it doesn't mean that he's an adult. Yeah. Uh, was that it? Yes. Uh yes. Now we are in the chat. Hello everybody. How you doing? Hello. Make it good, make it quick. Yes. Make it demure, make it mindful. Oh, it I'm TikTok. popular with the kids. I introduced my friends to Chapel Roan today. Me. Me. Why? Because one of my friends brought up how like people are mad at her for canceling canceling tour dates so that she can go um rehearse for the VMAs. Okay. Two two things that like men pushing forty don't care about yeah. is Chapel Roan tour dates and the MTV Video Music Awards. Right. And he just like blurted that out there, and I'm like, I know one of her songs because the pretty girl who does backstage interviews on Monday Night Raw uses them in her Instagram reels. So I sent them that. I sent them the music video for Hot to Go, and they're like, <laughs> Why do I? Why Why did you send me this? This is just Lady Gaga at home. I'm like. <laughs> Or new or new, new Lady, Lady Gaga. Gaga, yeah. Um so that that is my how do you do fellow kids moment of the day. I uh, last I saw of Chap- Chapel Chapel Room? Chapel. Chapel. Yeah. Last I saw of her was her upset that fans don't have any boundaries, like right. coming up to her in public. Yeah. Uh and her being upset about that. And people were like, Well, you're famous, you signed up for that. Right. No. I understand what she's saying. Yeah. Like there's like a most people are assholes yeah. so like when you're that famous mm-hmm. there's gonna be people uh breaking boundaries yeah it's just you gotta be a normal person and when you're in public and yeah people when they see a celebrity turn into not a normal person yeah they turn they turn feral yeah um and you're as a celebrity you're just expected to take it or else yeah. you're an asshole you had a if you get yeah. one bad interaction with somebody you could, you could ruin your image um Mecha Dragon says, Bob, Will, time to ask again if it's worth getting the new iPhone, especially now since my Samsung phone been lagging recently. That's entirely up to you. Yeah, I mean, how bad is the lagging on your Samsung phone? I really like iPhones. I like how easy they are to use. Mm -hmm. I like the Apple ecosystem. I know that not everybody's going to like that. I like a lot of things about Android, too, though. Mm -hmm. So uh, go to an Apple store and fuck around with one. Yeah, That's all I can say. And find out. And find out. I don't follow a single pop star. Good for you. Yeah. More power to you. More power. The crew is getting offline. But we did it. Yes. We won. We stopped killing games, everybody. I mean, that shows like that must show something's working. You know, if they're being like sued for like the crew going offline, they're like, I mean, we're just fucking putting offline most to shut these people up. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. Just got here. What did I miss? The whole show. We were following the presidential debate right now. Yes. Really you, harrowing. You bros want to bring the mood? To- nope. <laughs> nope. Gonna stop that right there. 
Uh, did you guys see Linkin Park is starting tour again and a new album with a female singer? She rocks. Did we talk about this last uh, week? We did not. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Did you, did like, immediately after they announced Emily Armstrong as their lead singer, do you know, like, what happened? Like, Yeah, she's a Scientologist or something. She's a Scientologist who uh, supported her friend and convicted rapist Danny Masterson during his rape trial. Also, apparently, NFT show. Really? Yeah. That I didn't know about. Oh, no, yeah. I. That's not the worst part, though. The supporting a rapist part is bad. I thought she sounded great. She sounds fine. I yeah. liked it a lot. She doesn't sound like Chester no. like at all, but no. I kind of like that. I was never really a big Linkin Park fan. I kind of like how it's, her voice is like grungy. Yeah. It's like more punk. I feel like she would have been a good fit had it not been for the fact that she's a Scientologist and supported Danny Masterson during his. Yeah, when he that's, was not yeah. that's not so, great. That's not So poor Linkin Park. Also, Dave Grohl cheated on his wife today. Yeah, we, learned, we learned that Dave that Grohl cheated on his wife. Fun. It's bad. It's bad <laughs> to be rock star yeah. these days. You know, and the fact that he didn't start off the the post with "I got another confession to make" is just like a real missed opportunity. Oh, fucking damn it. Uh, Jonota was also an NFT show. I am. Oh, that makes more sense. Man, it's like it's it feels so easy to be to reject offers like yeah. if someone offers you something <laughs> and you're like wait this seems this like seems, it would be bad for yeah. people it feels so easy for me to be like no yeah that's bad for people <laughs> but for some reason everyone else is just like yeah I'll yeah that's fine i don't care about my audience yeah uh I try to separate the artists from their personal life. Otherwise, I can never listen to music again. Musicians are a rough bunch. That is 100% true. It's different for everybody. Like Everybody has their own limits. There you know? are limits. Like, there are definitely yes. limits. S some, I mean, some musicians are undeniably amazing. I listen and, to, and they're yeah. kind of assholes. I listen to a lot of like 60s and 70s music. Most of those people are the most horrible people yeah. you will ever hear about. So There's just some... I've had things ruined for me because the people behind them are just insufferable. Yeah. Can't think of one now, but I mean, uh, Borderlands. Borderlands, <laughs> yeah. Um, Bob, will you be getting the new iPhone? No. If you did, would you make a YouTube video with it? So the 24 frames per second recording and editing option. So that's only for... So they all have... Every iPhone has 24 frames yeah. per second right now. Uh, I think they've had they've had them for a long time. Um, this one, it shoots 4K 120 frames per second, which is insane. No, yeah. I don't. Nobody needs that. It's like way overkill. Uh, and you can, in the phone, drop that down to 24 frames per second. You can yeah. you can have 120 frames and slow it down to conform to a 24 frames per second timeline. Mm -hmm. Um. So no, I don't need that. I'm I'm not interested. The the directional mic sounds cool. Uh, I have everything that I need with my own iPhone, so I'm happy. Did Bob show Will the new theme? We have a new theme song. Oh, somebody wrote a somebody wrote a Wolf Den song. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. No, I did not see that. Um. I think Apple mentioned some new game from Tencent. Yes, they mentioned uh, uh, some. It was like a, one of them gotcha games. Okay. Wait, you guys still live? No. No, we're uh, dead. Th thanks for hanging out. <laughs> thank everybody. you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den and YouTube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put the archive version up over on YouTube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch, you can do that as well because we're also on audio podcasts on any and every podcast service such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, Audible.com even. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that also is a placement on those respective platforms. I'll be live most likely on Thursday. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, Zelda comes out next week. Really? Yep. So soon. So soon, I know. They, I feel like they just announced that. Uh, I don't know what I'll do. Oh, I have a video coming out. Uh thursday on the mig switch oh tomorrow 
morning, so Wednesday morning, I will be at Adorama in New York uh, doing a podcast. And it's live, and there are seats. You can come watch it. <laughs> there are will, seats. But it will also just be live on YouTube. Uh, so I'll be talking about camera gear and stuff. And I like talking about camera gear. So uh, watch that. Otherwise, goodbye. Bye.